Oh, we get video as well. Lovely. You didn't want to brag, but yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you eating? Roman, Roman just decided to have his, have his dinner as we were about to record a podcast. No, it's good timing, mate. I thought it was an excellent plan. Well, Roman. it's a new improved recipe because I've just broken a glass. It's gone right in there, so I'm making sure there's no glass in it by eating it. Brilliant. <laughs> Defin- definitely the best way to find out, I guess. I mean, good luck. There's only one way to do it. There is. I look forward to the mouth bleeding updates as we go through the podcast. <laughs> yeah, if, if all of a sudden you hear uh, sirens, you know that I've actually been in the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> how are you boys doing? You all right? Good, yeah. How are you guys? Very, yeah, very good. good. Yeah, fine. very good, actually. Very strong. Oh, my God. I've just adjusted the windows. Oh, that is so much easier. I've just adjusted... Oh, it's obviously gone into mobile view. I've adjusted Instagram into mobile view, and it's so much easier to read. Oh Great God. story, mate. Write that one down. <laughs> is, this, is this content? It's started already. It's, it doesn't no. normally start this early. Fucking I mean, hell. if you've heard the shows, none of it's content. <laughs> mm. uh, fair point. You know, in, in 18 months, I don't think we've had a shred of it. Uh, speaking of content, let's do a podcast. Whoa! Welcome to episode 37 of Fruck Unwrapped, the official podcast of Food Review UK. My name is Nathan Peterson, and tonight we will be discussing the healthier side of the food aisle. But before that, let me introduce my guests. If our first guest was a salad item, he'd be a cucumber. He's cool, he's fresh, and I've heard he's at least 12 inches long. It's Stuart Bullock. Nathan, thank you. You've never you've never said kinder things. Thank you very much. How are you? You're welcome. Yeah, not bad. At least twelve as well. That's, at a, least, that's a cold. At least that's a cold day. If I was going to pick about anything, uh, cucumbers are one of my least favourite foods. Oh, they're unpleasant, aren't they? I do apologise. Uh, I don't know what to do now. Do you want me to restart the show and just make up a pun on the? I try. The- I think if there's anything that's like a cucumber that I find more palatable, I find a courgette more palatable, but they don't have the uh, the length, do they? The they- cucumber has traditionally. You, you prefer a courgette over a cucumber? Oh, very much. Obviously not raw, but I prefer courgette <laughs> to cucumber, yeah. I like a, roast, I like a roasted courgette. Much like Dwight like York. Oh. 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 <laughs> that's, to, uh, that's topical, because she's been on telly again, hasn't she? That uh, has she? Jordan, yeah, she's been on the telly again, yeah. What's she doing? Don't know. Don't, I, don't, I turn off when she, she arrives. Complaining about Peter Andre, I think. Uh, probably probably about Dwight as well. I won't have a bad word said against him. I don't believe anything she says. I think he's a great father. I don't think you have to be present I don't think you have to be present for your kids in order to be classified as a good father. No. <laughs> no, I don't know what's going on with this. I'm gonna move on. Um my next guest would be a cherry tomato. He's sweet, he has little round balls, and if you're not careful he'll explode all down your chin. It's Michael Jameson. <laughs> oh, no, it's, just, it's absolutely obscene. How are we allowed to get away with that? Is they're not like Ofcom for podcasts or something. Podcom. Podcom, or possibly. Pod off. Po- po- possibly, but I-, I don't know what to say, mate. How's it, anyway, how's he got 12, he called him 12 inch long and I just got little fucking red balls? <laughs> like a sun dried. Shriveled red balls. You ma- you making it with? He didn't say. He didn't specify a colour, and he certainly didn't say shriveled. This says more well, about no, you I'm, than it does about I'm him. Reading between the lines and filling in the blanks with that one. With that. <laughs> How you doing, Michael? You alright? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm not bad. Thank you very much, my friend. And finally, our guests are the hosts of a weight loss podcast, helping inspire men to lose weight through healthy eating and football. We did think about just having one of them on, but fuck it, it's treat night. We'll have both of them. Please welcome from the Man V Fat podcast, it's Roman and Stuart. Hi, guys. How you doing, boys? Good. How are you? Hey, you all. You all right? Very good. Sorry I don't have any uh, salad-related puns that, you know... Oh, I was cool. waiting as well. Uh, well, maybe next time, maybe next time. But uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. Well, well, um, I'll, say, I'll say that now. Yeah, we're not really <laughs> what we're in for. So, <laughs> don't worry. I've listened to your episodes. You're, uh, you, you'll, you'll be in uh, good company tonight. You're, you're fine. Um, now, obviously, before we get onto the podcast side of life of what you do, obviously, you guys are both involved in the Man v Fact 
um, gaming, the, the regime, the weight loss regime. Um, for anyone at home that's not aware of what that is, how would you best sell that to them? Oh, this is such a hard thing to sell because whenever you say it, people just look confused. It's basically a weight loss program for men that's centered around football. Now, nobody could ever understand what that is by just listening to me say it. But yeah, it's it's not really a football league and it's not really a weight loss league. It's kind of a hybrid of the two. As you'll know, Nate. As I do know, yes. Um, how, how long have you guys been playing uh, in the... Is it the Salford League you play in or is it the Manchester League? No, it's the Manchester League we play, Manchester we League. play in. Yeah. Um, I myself been um, just over a year. Uh, so I think five seasons in the Manchester League. I think Stuart. Yeah, I'm two years down, me. Two years down. What sort of weight loss have you guys found over that, that period-ish? I'm about five and a half stone down, knocking six stone. Yeah, I'm um, about three stone. Three stone, yeah. That's impressive. Wow. Well, yeah. well done, boys. Well done, boys. Um, so coming to the podcast that you, you both are on, um, again, tell us, what, 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 is, what is the Man V Fat podcast? What do you guys do on there? And also, how did you get involved in that? Because obviously, I assume you both just started playing one day. So how did you go from being players to, you know, having this podcast? <laughs> I don't really know, to be honest. We were just like... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a story. Go on, go on. Oh, okay. So, Stuart used to pick me up from work and we'd drive to the Football League on a Monday night. And we'd just chat each, we'd just let you chat to the football, to the game, from the game. And Stu just turned around one day and just had a, like a proper light bulb moment and went, we need to do a podcast. And I was like, that's quite good. So, you're like, Roman, you're quite technical, aren't you? I says, well, I'll give it a go. And I think we kind of, then we saw like kind of this actually it could work. This has got some depth. So. Yeah, it was a completely random statement, if I'm honest. Um, and I had literally no idea how to follow through on it. So I was like, "Yeah, let's do a podcast, Roman. You do it, and I'll just talk on it." Uh, which is basically how it came about, isn't it? it well, yeah, it was a it was a proper brain fart. Like, they had some substance behind it. it yeah. Yeah, so we just got some, uh, Roman was the tech guy, was like, how do, you, how do you even do a podcast? I was like, what, what even is a podcast? Because <laughs> I'm just throwing that word about like I know what it is, and I was like, I don't really know what it is. So yeah, so basically we just got some gear together, recorded with a, a player who'd done really well in our league, Ross Hunter in episode one, and just went on from there. If you actually found out what a podcast is, can you let us know? Because we're sort of... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody knows, do they? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, and how are you finding that then? How long has that been going now? Is it just over a year or something like that? Or coming up to a year? It's probably coming up to a year, isn't it? I think it's April, wasn't it? First recorded. It was, yeah. It was so, yeah. Ross. Yeah, so Ross yeah, we're just one. coming up for a year. Now. We got better. <laughs> we definitely got better. We did. We get did. better as they go on. Uh, and then every now and again, you let yourself down and you're really crap on. But, uh, but yeah, we are better than what we were. No, you didn't. I mean, it's a fantastic listen. I, I genuinely, like, this time last year, I was not interested in, in losing weight or anything. I think if, if someone had told me that a year later I'd be listening to a weight loss podcast um, or, or, or a podcast that, that's, that's linked to a, a weight loss regime, I would have I would have been very surprised. But you guys make a very interesting product. And for me personally and anyone in my sort of situation, I think it's actually quite inspiring hearing some of the guys on there um, talking about, you know, their experiences with, with losing weight and, and obviously their involvement in the the Man V Fat program, because which you know is, is for me is life changing, and it's it's seeming across the country is 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 getting more and more um, recognition for the work that it does. And uh, but yeah, your 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 podcast. I mean, like I say, how did that come about? Did you did you take that to to Shan and ask him, or did you? Basically, just recorded it, and we were like, we've recorded this thing, and we don't really know what it is, and we want you to listen to it. And he was like, yes, yeah, really good. Um, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, we'll just record it. And he was like, okay, you can use the name, but don't make it terrible. And we like, oh. <laughs> um, I don't know how we're doing so far. Yeah, and then, and then a couple of maybe three or four episodes in, he was like, no, let's like kind of make it official and we'll make you the official podcast. And we were like, yeah, okay. Uh, completely surprised because we're just winging it, to be honest. Completely yeah. winging. We're yeah. winging life, to be, a bit, to be mm -hmm. fair. So this is nothing. I mean, Stu, you're really selling this for us right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't listen to us. We don't know what a podcast is. And we have crap episodes from time to time. Um, but no, no, absolutely, you guys are... Um, I think you're smashing it, and I think it's actually a very important show um, to be out there. And uh, what's the what's the feedback been 
from like fans? Have you had much feedback from you know the, the players across the country? Yeah, it's been really good. It's been really good. We're just trying to get players to interact with us, and we don't get a massive amount of interaction, do we? Um, but we get we get a good you know there's a good listener base there. Uh, we make sure it gets shared. We're now up to date on our socials, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, we've got we made some really good contacts as well through it, haven't we? Like British Obesity Society. Yeah. Uh, people, the various different people. And I think that's when it, it shows that, that to us, that's when we think we're completely winging it, and we have someone like really important on, and we're like, it's like I'm a, I'm a bus driver from Manchester, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, podcast. And we've got like a psychologist coming in a couple of months who's like a sports psychologist, and he's like, you know, you work simple uh. for sport, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> 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 just a drip of sweat as yeah. you ask me the question. <laughs> so yeah, it does hit it home really, doesn't it? Um, what shows do you prefer doing? The ones with like the players or with the uh, the experts? I like the ones where I just take the piss out of Ron, to be honest. That's <laughs> every show. <laughs> Intro to every show yeah. is, that's what you do. To, to be honest, we used to do quite a lot of planning for him. Well, I used to do quite a lot of planning for him, but I found that the best ones are kind of where... Uh, they start quite structured and then they just veer off into wherever, you know, the guest wants to go. I think what we found that works for, for, for our podcast in particular is giving them that kind of comfortable format um, and just have literally just taking it as it was a chat in a pub. Yeah. And I think as soon as we get the, you know, the, the citations out of the way, um, it just then, you can, you can see the, that the player or whoever interviewing just relax, and then that's when I think Stu kind of sees that and then gets on with actual how the how the podcast wants to run. And I think it's been working so far. Yeah, I think. you kind of see the shoulders of the guest kind of just drop a little bit, and you think, right, I've got you now. You're on the hook. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's when you can just veer off where you where you know it goes. It's kind of a beast of its own, I suppose. Yeah. I imagine there's a lot of the certainly the guys that are running through it at the moment that that probably don't want to. Although they've agreed to come on the podcast, they're still a bit maybe, you know, nervous about talking about that because obviously one of the things I've heard you guys talk on your show and also um, when Stu was on the Obesity uh, podcast was about you know how men don't talk about losing weight. Um, and so I imagine there's a lot of guys that come on there and like you say they're a bit skeptical and a bit wary about talking about it. And eventually, like you say, you just. You, you sort of break down that barrier and they um, they they become a bit more comfortable with uh, discussing what they've been through. Yeah, that's the thing. It, once, once you, you know, you've got to kind of we'll try and make it as though let them think that they're not on a podcast kind of thing. So it's just yeah. three guys chatting and then you can, they'll open up a little bit then. Um, but yeah, you can see at the start kind of a bit stiff and, you know, quite yeah. closed off, but we get there, don't we? As soon as they see the equipment brought out, it's like, oh no, yeah, this, this is real. But what I tend to do is, I mean, I don't, know how, I don't know how your setup is, but what we tend to do, I tend to just like kind of hide it to one side and I can't kind of hide on the other, on a, on a table. Yeah. Uh, and Stu's more the kind of, uh, that I just want, you know, Stu to kind of converse. And again, it is, yeah, that's the way, that's the way it's going. It's an evolving thing though, isn't it? It is. It? Still trying to find out. It's, well, it is. It's still, the Man vs. Fat podcast is still in its infancy. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know we are looking to you know we are looking to evolve it in, in in such a way. Um, I think more like maybe guest presenters as well, yeah, um, and things like that. So we do we do have a lot of ideas. It's going to take it hopefully to a level that you know I mean it's yours in in retrospect really. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like man v fat, I suppose, because man v fat as a program itself is quite in its infancy. You know, we're only three or four years down the line, and it's it's growing so rapidly that. It kind of reflects that in a way, doesn't it? Yeah. And you say about evolving. One of your recent episodes—I don't know if it, was, it wasn't the last one. I think the one before was uh, was I think your first foray into food reviewing, as you uh, ta- tackled the world of protein bars. Inspired by yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Completely off the cuff when we were like, we had a guest kind of books and they cancelled, and we were like, uh, we need to produce some content because we can't, you know, we are getting paid for it. So we were like. Let's just get some protein bars and we'll review them. And we like wrote to one of the guys and we're like, yeah, just come and do this podcast with us. It was literally a phone call. Roman, what? Go in Asda now. Get me some protein bars. I'm on my way to yours. I'm going to do this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that was amazing because I saw I saw like the uh, the episode pop up and uh, I think I sort of sent a sort of joking tweet on uh, uh, on uh, on Twitter like before I'd listened to the show like oh getting into food reviews I see how it is and then I listened and obviously you guys were very kind about us and uh, I just had like a little sort of 
a fangirl moment where I was like, oh my god, this is amazing what they've just said. And I sent a message to the other two boys and said, oh, listen to uh, listen to this episode from whatever the time was, just to, to hear. So, um, but no, that was that was that was cool to hear, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And I definitely would like to see more of those on the show because I, I imagine there's a lot of guys out there want you know tips on what things are good to eat like tasty as well as you know not just eat this because it's lower calories or whatever but actually eat this because it's nicer um, i think that's something we're definitely looking to explore as well isn't it? yeah i do I yeah i do think our because our minds work differently stew is about counting calories i'm more about nutrients i mm-hmm. think so i'm not really about calories but i say that just shows the kind of spectrum that you of many dealing with in man versus fat yeah i think i think mm-hmm. I had an idea, this is brand new to you, Roman, you've not heard this before, but kind of like <laughs> you go on some really fatty, crappy diets. Like I might start drinking booty tea and uh, mm. kind of lots of good shit. So, <laughs> so, yeah, we might do that and then we can record the uh, the outcome. That's what. How about you go on this, Stu, and I'll just monitor what goes on <laughs> with you. Tea, Roman, we'll do it together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Roman's on 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 that flex. No, we're not that one, is he? No, we'll talk. Just no. that. We'll, de- we'll 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 develop that idea, Roman. I think we'll have to contact BBC first as well. Um, yeah, lovely stuff. So anyone at home, you know, if if you're curious about this, give these guys a listen, and uh, hopefully you'll sort of hear a bit more about the actual regime. And if that's something you want to do, then I definitely, like I say, heartily recommend it. Um, if you guys have listened to the show before, you may be aware that uh, new guests such as yourself, we uh, we asked them some random questions. So from each of you, I would like two numbers, please, between one and ten. Uh, I'll start with uh, Stu, if you want to give me uh, your first number, please. I'll have number ten, please. Number ten. Are, yeah. you, allerg- are you allergic to any foods? Um, yeah. Do you know what I'm allergic to? I'm allergic, uh, to, guinea- I'm allergic to guinea pig food. Right? <laughs> right? Because when I was when I was a wee nipper, um, we had a guinea pig, and every time I feed it, I used to come out in a terrible rash. Uh, so from that day forward, I've, I've always had this thing that I'm allergic to guinea pig food. So I've never yeah. eaten it, so it's probably a good thing. That's the best but, yeah. answer I've ever heard in my life. That's, that's, that's what I'm allergic to, as far as I'm aware, anyway. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, don't try it. Don't, don't go on a week of guinea pig food. Yeah, I, I've not tested it to see whether I'm still allergic because sometimes that can happen, can't it? You're allergic when you're younger, but I'll, I'll just leave that one alone, I think. <laughs> just go and pet smart and start feeling up some of the food. <laughs> <laughs> can you, we have to ask you to leave. It's <laughs> for the animals. No? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, Roman, give me your uh, first number, please. Um, I'll go for number eight. Number eight. Uh, Food heaven and hell. What's your uh, what's your favourite and your least favourite food? Oh, okay. Um, food hell. Go for food hell first. Um, never been keen on lamb. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> never been keen on lamb. Um, I think just when mum and dad used to cook it like proper like sinewy bone. Now it's not for me. I could have discussed. I know. I could have discussed. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is. I'm trying to work on it. Don't listen. I'm trying to work on it because it is a beautiful cut of meat. But I just. I, yeah, um, food heaven. Oh, okay, so oh, just anything seafood. Anything wow. Seafood. I mean, you're literally the opposite of me. I think. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Love lamb. <laughs> hate oh, seafood. Trap, eh? <laughs> Thanks for spelling it out, MJ. Um, well, you know. So, <laughs> uh, Stu, your second number, please. Uh, number two, please. Number two, uh, do you have any weird food quirks apart from guinea pig food? Uh, um, I don't think I have really. No, I drain beans. Is that weird? What like, baked no, bait beans? I like baked beans. Like I don't like them too juicy. I like to drain. Oh, them. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, I mean, how much do you drain them? Like a whole lot. Yeah. My wife finds it a bit strange, but yeah, it's oh, acceptable. Oh yeah. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Depends on how much you're draining them, though. I mean, if you're literally just completely yeah, like washing like, like by hand, like singly or into like. <laughs> <Fair play. laughs> uh, and Roman, your second number, please. Uh, I'll go for number five. Why not? Oh, it's a classic. What is the sexiest fruit or vegetable? <sighs> what is the sexiest fruit or vegetable? And that can mean whatever you wish it to mean, my friend. That is the- oh, Michael. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, Stuart, do not follow up my sound effect with that comment. <laughs> you got you got a melon ball around. I got <laughs> what's 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 the sexiest fruit? Is it, I don't know. It's got to be like I don't know passion fruit maybe. Oh, wow. oh, yeah, nice. I like that. Isn't like it? you're thinking. Passion fruit. That's the, that's the answer. That, that's the answer that a man gives when he's thinking there might be women listening. And what I want to do is I want to give the answer that makes me seem like a considerate, like a romantic man. You've not gone straight in for a nice pair of juicy melons or an aubergine, the passion fruit. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Well, banana, because that's... Very, that tells me you're a very gener- generous lover. Like. <laughs> Someone said to me the other day, it says, have you, ever, have you ever eaten a banana whilst looking at a stranger? <laughs> and I'm like, well, who thinks of these things? I thought you were going to go for a phallic shape, I'll be honest. A <laughs> phallic what? Phallic shape. Phallic shape. Passion fruit. Putting the Roman in romantic. (laughs) 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 Lovely stuff. Thank you very much, guys. Um, Right, let's move on to a lovely bit of Quivia. Uh, tonight's game is lovingly entitled A Balanced Diet. Nice. What I've got for you guys is I've got two food, let's call them combinations. I'm going to give you the first one and the number of calories in that, and then I'm going to ask you how many uh, grams of the second food stuff you would need to make up the same amount of calories. Does that make sense? No. Wow. Uh, I've just so like a 10-hour shift at work. <laughs> Don't worry, this is purely, I would guess, a guessing game. Um, so, for example, the first question is, 200 grams of peanut butter is 1,178 calories. How many grams of milk chocolate would you need to make the same amount of calories? Oh, right, Does yeah. that, na- does yeah, that yeah. now make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Piece of piss, yeah. So I... W- <laughs> a piece of piss? Excellent. <laughs> um, thanks for belittling my work. Stuart, then, if you're so fucking good at this... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Right. Okay. So, it, what 1178 11, calories of peanut butter is 200, 200 grams. Yeah, right. kind of that I, sentence. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I I reckon chocolate is more calorific, not massively more. I I'm try- I'm going to go. I'm just going to go I'm going to go for a nice 150 grams of, of milk chocolate be about the same this is where I remember that we've got an issue that we've got two stews on the line no um, we've got one Stuart and one stew it's very simple Nathan well you're both stews in my eyes um stew hello I can't even say stew in Manchester because you're basically in the same area you guys so I don't oh. really know northern stew yeah Nor- northern one, stew doesn't work the one with um, the beard <laughs> Um, <laughs> MVF stew. There we go. Um, yeah, how many how many grams of milk chocolate to make up one thousand one hundred and seventy eight calories? Two hundred and fifty. One sixty. What? <laughs> how much? Sorry to say. Three fifty. Oh, three fifty. Sorry. What was that? What was that? One hundred and sixty. <laughs> is that yeah, my... is that GMT or yeah, Eastern so Standard my... Time? <laughs> Correct references. Uh, Roman. Ah. Uh... I've lost me a peanut butter, to be fair. Um, see, I, I don't know. I think chocolate's less calories. Because I'm, I'm looking at dark chocolate a lot, so that's quite that's less calorie. Because I'm thinking energy. Uh, sorry, peanut butter's got quite a bit of energy on it. Just guess, Rob. <laughs> 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 number to guess. I don't know. 50. 50? <laughs> Going 50. Wild. Uh, and finally, Michael. So, sorry, how many calories is it? Uh, yep. Yeah. 1178. 
1178. Oh, 11, so 1178 yes. calories in 200 grams of peanut butter. Did you say there's that many calories in 200 grams of peanut butter? That is what I saw earlier, yes. Why on earth am I drinking it like four tubs of peanut butter a day? Because I've read it's healthy online. <laughs> if you eat it, like, a celery stick or something. Out of interest, where, where, which website was it that told you this? Wellbeing.man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, okay, so calories. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, one hundred and ninety-eight grams. One hundred ninety-eight. Very specific. Okay. Question two. Uh, one hundred grams of mayo gives you six hundred and eighty calories. So how many grams of ketchup? And we are going to start with stew MVF. Hundred grams gives you how many? Did you say? Uh, hundred grams of mayo gives you six hundred and eighty calories. Um, six hundred grams. 600 grams. Okay, Roman? I, 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 Roman, didn't you say before that stew's, stew's a big calorie counter? Yeah. Because I, I, I think you're talking nonsense. That these, these answers are the, the answers of a man who's never heard what calories are. 600, <laughs> 600, grams, 600 grams of ketchup. 680 calories. Oh, hang on, that don't sound as daft as I thought it did. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking 500, so... How, how, big's a gram of, how big's a gram of ketchup? How big's a gram of ketchup? Yeah, I can't well, even... It's a gram of ketchup. <laughs> I can't, I can't, it. can't picture Roughly, it. Roughly, yeah. Uh, yeah, Roman, 500 are you going, or are you... I'm going to go 500. <laughs> My, MJ? <laughs> 325 grams. 325, and... Finally, Stuart Bullock. Uh, see, I'm thinking it's. I'm thinking you need less ketchup for because it's so full of sugar that you need less ketchup than you would of the mayonnaise. The may- less than a hundred. Don't, don't fat, give him help. Fat doesn't necessarily equate to calories in, in the same way, whereas sugar is just calories. Come on, Stuart. Eighty grams. 80 grams. Oh. Are these all going to be 100 grams you have the first item? No. No, not, ne- not necessarily. Neither. Oh, wow. They've both been different. For ex- <laughs> it was 200 grams and then 100 grams. <laughs> That's Question three. Said. Question three. 150 grams of cheddar gives you 603 calories. How many grams of pineapple do you need? And we're going to start with Roman. How many grams of cheddar? 150 grams of cheddar. Gives you 603 calories. So, how many grams of pineapple? Yes, pineapple's really sugary, isn't it? I'm going to say 450. 450. Uh, next, we've got Michael. Uh, 237 grams. 237 grams. Uh, Stuart Bullock. 300 grams. 300 grams. And finally, stew. I'm going to say 400. How much? 400? 450. 450. You said yeah. 450. I'll say 550. 550. Okay. Uh, number four. 100 grams of Rice Krispies is 381 calories. How many... Now, I'm going to switch up a bit. How many millilitres... Of semi-skimmed milk, do you need? Oh, boom! Uh, first up is Michael. Uh, did you say 150? <clears throat> 150 grams? No, no 100. 100 grams. Um, if, if you listen the first time, that'd be great. Oh uh, yeah, come on. Um, uh, 212 milliliters. Okay, okay. Uh, next we have Mr. Bullock. 1,300 milliliters. Oh, blimey. Uh, next up we have. Oh, no, no, Stu- don't say blimey when I give my answer. No, 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 just, the point, differ- no, no, no just the difference, my friend. We've gone liters. From, the fact that we've gone from 200 milliliters to 1,300 milliliters was, was literally all I was right, oh, blimey. So, right, so who are you blimey at? Are you blimey at him or me? Because one I'm of blimey us is obvi- it. obviously wildly bl- wrong. No, I'm blimey bl- at the. Well, it, didn't blimey me, did he? Bradley, what's his face, doesn't do this on the chase. 
<laughs> Doesn't he? I don't know. I don't watch. I don't know. I don't watch it. I don't <laughs> oh, brilliant! That's a good I'm... show. It's a good show. Sort of does you. actually. Does he? Sort of. Yeah, he does belittle the. What's up with your contestants lip? when what, they're, when they're stupid? I, just a feeling, a mild amount of pain. It's massive. In this area. It's massively swollen. This is great. You look like sloth from the Goonies. It's. You... <laughs> I don't think it's swollen. <laughs> carry, on, carry on with the quiz. Yeah, brilliant. Can we, yeah, Stu. Uh, <laughs> did you say semi skimmed or skimmed? Semi. Semi. Always got a semi. <laughs> 900 mils. 900 mils. And finally. Oh, Roman. no! <laughs> <laughs> finally, Roman. I'll go, I'll go for. Um, 723. Ooh. 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 And yeah, finally... Nate's reacting to the high volumes. And finally... One Dairy Milk McFlurry, uh, McFlurry <laughs> is 292 <laughs> calories. Oh. To the, near, to the nearest... It? Yeah, that's what I thought. One Dairy Milk McFlurry, 292 calories. How many... McDonald's chicken McNuggets would one need to match that amount of calories? Uh, and we are starting with Stuart Bullock. Five chick McNens. <laughs> Five chicken McNuggets. Five. Chick, chick McNens, yeah. Uh, other Stu? Seven. Ooh. Seven. And Roman? Three and a half. Three and a half. Blimey, he's gone for the halves. And oh, MJ? Yeah. Literally, literally, that's exactly almost exactly what I think. Um, I re- I'm reckoning they're 70 each, so Hundo 40, Tundo 80. I'm going to say three and a 3.6. If they're 70 each, you'd want 4.1. 263 calories? 292. Oh, fuck. 4.1. Cheers, mate. No worries. <laughs> You're having a pen and pad, innit? So what? <laughs> <laughs> Take so it what seriously. Was fin- what was the final answer there? Four point one, please, sir. Four point one. Okay, dokie. Right, that's all the questions. Let's go through the answers. Uh, Two hundred grams of peanut butter will get you uh, one thousand one hundred seventy-eight calories, or two hundred and twenty grams of milk chocolate. So Michael Jameson wins the point on that round. <laughs> Uh, second question: 100 grams of mayo is 680 calories, which would get you 607 grams of ketchup. Oh, uh, stew there with 600 was almost dead on. Good man. 150 grams of cheddar, 603 calories, which would get you an astounding 1,200 grams of pineapple. Wow, that's a lot of pineapple for your cheddar. Uh, the winner on that one again, stew up in the north. You're all in the north. Uh, 100 grams of Rice Krispies, 381 calories, would need six hundred, sorry, 762 mils of semi-skimmed milk. That's uh, Roman with the closest there. And the final one, you would need seven McNuggets to dip into your uh, McFlurry, which was dead on for Stu from Man v Fat, who walks away this week with oh. three, three out of five. I was a bit nervous, sir, I'll be honest. <laughs> Smashed it. So, Stu, do you want to retract your little jibe about him not knowing about calories, or...? It was me that said he didn't know about calories. My name's Stuart. Stuart sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're all Stu's. <laughs> Can we all just be Stu's? Oh, I Stuart. love this. No, Stuart no. Well, well done, Stu. Well, congratulations on winning the guessing game. Well done. <laughs> 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 nothing, nothing like a perfect pride. I need a bin next time, Stuart. <laughs> I'm loving this salty Stuart in the last, well, this instalment and maybe other instalments that are either in the future or in the past, where Stuart sort of <laughs> fail, is fail, salty. Fails, to, fails to win the game that he's supposed to be good at. Yeah, nice one. Very yeah. proud of winning, yeah. but very uh, dismissive of losses. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's like sore. It's like sore. Sore the right. Like the film. Sore yeah. loser. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Em- emphasis um, on the loser. Brilliant. 
Hello, it's MJ. You're listening to Frock Unwrapped. Please leave us a review on iTunes and check out our other exploits, which does include our Instagram page at Frockgram and our Twitter page at Food Review UK. And hey, we've got lots of awesome videos on YouTube. Thanks a lot for your support. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned in the uh, in the intro, and obviously from the quiz, tonight's uh, tonight's. Uh, episode is going to be devoted to healthy eating slash dieting. Um, All right, and uh, that's me out, guys. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> if I'd only known that's what it would have taken 18 months ago, and we could have had our nice little run without you, Michael Jameson. <laughs> yeah, unless you've got another fucking appetizers plan, you cheeky bastards. <laughs> <laughs> um what are your experiences with not necessarily the food side of it, but the actual just the process? What is your what are your experiences with dieting and healthy eating in general? Um, obviously, Stu and, and Roman are running through man v fat at the moment. But what other things have you tried in the past? Well, I'll pick this up, mate. Yeah. Um, well, what I've tried in the past, uh, just really going hard hitting on like carb cutting and stuff like that, which isn't sustainable. Um, I've not done anything like you know. What What's the most done? extreme thing you've done? Just eating like pure meat for a week. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't great. Atkins? No, I don't know. I, see, I've never been about the the fads. I've just been about just cutting the health into you know eating healthy stuff. So I've never. Oh no, I did. Oh yeah, yeah, I did one one time. Just think protein shapes were the way forward. And so I'd be having protein shakes for breakfast, dinner, you know, and a cup of tea, which was just me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. It sounds good, though. It sounds like some kind of diet that's advertised on the TV back in the yeah. 80s. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. How, how were the shakes? Were they, I mean, I've never, I've, tr- I've tried um, Slim Fast in the past, but I've never tried any the protein ones. They were revolting. Uh, what what is it? Was it Pro Max? Oh yeah, yeah. It was Pro Max diet, and it was it was a strawberry one, and it was oh god awful. Oh god, it was dead. Ugh, no, it was all bittery and no, not for me. Did it work though? It did actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, it didn't, no, it didn't work. Well, it's, it's, no, it's, then you come back to Man V Fat, have you? Didn't you? Yeah, because then it's like you know it. Got the way off, but then you know when I went back to a normal diet, you know of kebabs and chips, then it put it back on, didn't it? Surprise! <laughs> you know? the, the normal diet, yeah. And kebabs uh, and chips will do that to you. Almost sounds surprised. Uh, what about you, Stu? Have you have you tried anything else? I, I I'm like the poster boy, me for like a fad diet. Done it. Uh, Cambridge, uh, light alive plan. Done that one. That was awful. Um, Atkins done that. Slimming World done that. Never done Weight Watchers. Um, yeah, cut carbs. The only one I've not done is, is the new one, keto. Ooh. Sick of hearing about keto. It's just Atkins. Atkins yeah. light, I call it. Yeah. But yeah. That'll be the one to try on the podcast then, a week on that. Yeah, keto. I was thinking more extreme for you, man. What, keto? No, I, I, do you know what? Keto would be all right for you because you're athletic, aren't you? Well, I did phone my doctor on the keto diet because I phoned her saying, listen, I'm thinking about doing a keto diet to lose some weight. Um, can you have a look at it for me? Because obviously epilepsy and it is there, but, you know, to wean kids, it only young kids to wean them off the medication when they're younger. And she phoned me up two days later and says, um, so this keto diet you're thinking of doing? She went, yeah, she went, it's not a good idea. I says, why? She went, you're just eating pure fat. I was like, so stay away from them. She went, yeah, you're going to die. Which thanks, you just saved my life there. So, you know, kudos to you, but... Um, yeah, she wasn't very pleased about when she went into it because I thought it was a scientific kind of, you know, um, find that doctors would use, you know, to to get people on the right track. But yeah, that's not that's not the case. Yeah, that's the new buzzword, isn't it? Keto. It's quite keto. Yeah. Yeah, the- I, I still I still got no idea what it is, but you know, that's well, the one I see kick, kicking high, around. High fat, low carb diet, isn't it? Yeah. So, lots of oils and avocados. Yeah, more natural fats, not like animal fats and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about you, Stuart and uh, and MJ? Have you, you attempted anything in the past, and what what were your uh, experiences been like? I mean, obviously, I've, my my struggles with 
with yo-yoing weight have been well documented. You only have to look at my my Facebook photos over the last, um, I suppose, 12 years. Um, I was always a big lad, and then I lost a lot of weight um, 12 years or so ago. Put it all back on and more until the point when my son was born. One point, I think I was about 23 stone. Um, and then lo- and then five years ago, got, dropped it all again. And, the, and five years ago, it was through it was through doing Slimming World, not going to classes, but following a Slimming World plan. And I did find that 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 was what worked for me because it meant I could still eat big portions, which is one of my one of my weaknesses. Um, I like to be full. I'm, I'm that I think most of my weight problems stem from the fact that I I I like to be full all the time. And if I'm if the easiest thing that's going to fill me up is an entire packet of biscuits. I'll eat that packet of biscuits. So the the slimming world worked really well for me. Um, I did that. I had some Weight Watchers shakes back in the day. Uh, not Weight Watchers, the Slim Fast shakes back in the Slim day. Fast. But I've never been. I, I've never felt the need for fad diets because I know, I know how to lose weight. Um, my issue is starting it and having that willpower to continue it. And once I'm a couple mm-hmm. of weeks in. I mean, I've been I've been on a diet for two years. I haven't lost any weight because I, I don't have that. I, I find it difficult to get through that first couple of weeks. After that first couple of weeks, I'll find the willpower. The willpower sticks with me. It's. Um, I think if I was, if, I think if I was slimmer and wanted to lose those extra few pounds to get from, um, you know, fourteen stone to thirteen stone or whatever, I might be tempted to try. There's a guy at work, like a guy at work, and he's he's a rugby player, and he does these, like he was showing me this diet plan, and it's where like at a set time of the day you've got to eat this many grams of this, and and then you've got to Fuck do hell. these, then you've got to do these movements, and then you've got to do all this kind of stuff, and he was saying to me, have a go at this, Stuart, have a go. I was like, mate, I don't need to do that. I need to stop eating crisps. That's what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can, I, you know, they, they've they've always kind of passed me by. Really, I think those fad diets tend to be for a slightly podgy bloke who wants to lose those last few pounds. They're not for the big lads. The big lads don't need them. Um, and I'm still, I'm still firmly in big lad territory. Yeah, Michael, that's enough. I feel, I feel like a bit like I've just stood up at the front of a class there and uh, <laughs> like made a. Made a but go on, Michael. Carry on. You've put, you've put your heart on your sleeve, and I appreciate you for your stories. Um, yeah, I've I've been large, fat, but I'm probably obese, I guess, for a while. Um, I think that I, I basically I went from quite a, a podgy podgy boy, uh, no, <laughs> sl- sl- slim boy. The chunky boy, um, and then I was I was definitely like podgy sort of through school, and then um, probably unappealing to you know sexually. It's weird, um, isn't it? Because when they made the Kit Kat chunky, that made it better. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Are you saying we need um, Kit Kat pudgy? <laughs> pudgy. And then I, my, I guess my only real success story with weight loss and health, it's, it's not, it's, it is weight loss because it's not healthy eating. Uh, there was a period of, I think it was, it, in my mind it was two weeks, but maybe it was a month because two weeks sounds like an absurdly short amount of time. I think I just said absurdly. That's what yeah, you, no, you definitely um, did with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absurdly. Um, sounds like an absurdly a, a short amount of time. Uh, it was definitely under a month, though. I went for a month period of basically I had one meal a day um, and just did loads of push ups. And I basically. <laughs> <laughs> loads, yeah. loads of push ups, that. <laughs> yeah, fair uh, and this is around the age of like, what, uh, 17, 18. Like lost a lot of weight, like, and then that's that's when my like my um driving license photo was taken and whatnot. So that's the best I've looked. Um, Where's the push ups for the photo? <laughs> Design preparation. So, it was, sort of. No, he was doing them in the cubicle. Um. So yeah, that that's what happened, and then um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that I got fat because I got a job, an office job where you just sat down all day, 
And I don't know why I was so stupid, but I believe I had Subway every day for lunch um, for like a very long time without really being like, oh, this is probably not good for health. Um, so, yeah, and then I definitely got big and now I, I'm, I think I've just got perpetually bigger. Um, I, I think I'm the biggest I've ever been. Um, and then over the course of the last, what, five or so years, whatever... Uh, I've always wanted to lose weight, um, and it's hard. I'm going through a bit of a phase again at the moment. So, like, I didn't always eat fruit. So, I'm going through a bit of a phase at the moment of eating, trying to eat as much fruit during the day and trying to eat less. Um, I think my problem is I overindulge. Um, that's definitely my my problem, actually. Um, overindulge, lack of willpower, really bad lack of willpower. Even though I have real bad, um, not. No, I have like quite bad self-conscious issues about my body. Like I, I do hate it, um, and like uh, like the the main I hate just being in work shirts. It's like horrible. Mm. I feel so all day. I basically hold my stomach in. Whenever I get up from my desk, I hold my stomach in. That's good though, um, isn't it? Engaging the core. <laughs> it's positive steps, honestly, mate. Literally, I think <laughs> behind this gut, I reckon I've got like the the most impressive six pack you'll ever find like a young peter andre <laughs> yeah looks like a four, like a four-year-old peter andre <laughs> um yeah and i've just found it so hard um this does i yeah and it's just trying to eat healthy food as well i try it and like i try all these recipes that sound really nice and i always don't like them they're just always so fucking bland mm. and like i try i even try and spruce up things like i try and spruce up vegetables with like lemon zest and lemon and olive oil or whatever have you and i just nothing nothing is tasty um and that when i cook food that is not like flavorsome or whatever literally just depresses claire and i so yeah i've there's been yeah i'd love i'd love to lose weight but i've never found something that is that works and like i say with all those other issues like lack of willpower and overindulgence i've just got to try and get for it all uh nate your loss is hugely inspiring mm. um but i yeah i don't know i've got to, i've got to think of something because again i, I do want to it's, it's very it's very serious now like i do want to lose it quite badly but We'll see. Like I said, I started eating a bit more fruit recently, and I'm I'm trying to cut back on portions a little bit, but it's it's slow and steady, sort of weaning myself off of certain things. I guess it's about getting in a different mindset and whatnot. And obviously, I know exercise is a part of that, and that's another thing that I find hard. But yeah, good. There's, do you know? It's right, there's it, it, nobody nobody who's overweight chooses to be overweight. Everyone who's overweight. There are issue. There are reasons why they are overweight. That the the fact that every single one of us who who is or has been overweight at various levels has spoken about the, this desire to lose weight, wanting to do things at all, at all stages throughout your life. The, the 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 perception of overweight people is that we're all stupid because we don't we don't know how we don't know how to not be fat. Of course we know how to not be fat. You you get you lose weight by doing more and putting less in. That's how you lose weight. We all know that, but there are whatever reasons that make us not not do that. Um and it's it's dead difficult. It might be work stress, it might be um various other pressures of time and commitment on your life that lead you to rush your food. It might be um mental health issues or whatever. Um, but the fact, like Michael says, the the fact that you feel self conscious just wearing a work shirt, um, I don't know what the answer is. You know, uh, is fat acceptance an answer? I don't think it is because none of us want to be fat. I, I don't want to be accepted for being overweight. I'd like to be. I'd like to be slim. But similarly, I I'd like. I don't know what I'd like. A cheesecake. <laughs> 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 he cut out this side early. I was like expecting, you know, a bit of back and forth, and it was like straight in there. Feelings. We, 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 we've had, you know, we've been doing this podcast. This is the most serious podcast I think we've ever done. <laughs> yeah. um, 
I, I certainly wasn't expecting any sort of revelations or any uh, confessions. I was literally just asking whether you did light a life or not. That's all I wanted to say, guys. Um, but no, <laughs> thanks. I can go thanks, back to boy. shouting out Boner if you want. <laughs> yeah. Always, always. Yeah, see, we get you boys on, and all of a sudden, everyone wants to just spill, spill their guts. Um, literally and, and metaphysically. Hey. Nate, where, where, where are you at now? Um, what, now now, or just what have I, I done in the past? Yeah, no, like, like, no joke. Past. And, and, past. And, 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 um, I've not tried a hell of a lot. I mean, I've, I've tried uh, the Slim Fast Shakes in the past, and they were, you know, moderately successful for what they're supposed to be. Um, I'm quite lucky in a way that even though, you know, I love my food and I love all these big flavours and fatty food and all that sort of stuff, I'm also quite... I can be quite determined when I want to be. And so, you know, to a lot of people, if you say, right, you're going to eat, you're going to have like two shakes a day and, you know, a healthy meal, it, just, it sounds awful because you're only eating once a day. Um, but to some degree, I can sort of switch, switch myself off from that and sort of go, well, this is what I need to do. And I'll just plow through. And it, it sort of, it's easy in a way because you just have the shakes, you know what you're going to have for breakfast, you know what you're going to have for, for lunch. There's no thought process in it. And so if you just accept that, um, and just do these shakes, then you you know it makes the life a lot easier. And I've I, I can't remember how much I lost in the past them, but you know a fair amount. I might have st- lost a stone or or two here and there over the times that I've tried it. But as Stuart said, these fad diets, you know, they don't stick, and they they're not they're, they're great for losing a little bit of like holiday weight or something like that, losing it up for you know lead up to something. But long term, it's never going to be the right attitude or the the, the right thing to do um to, to you know to, to lose it and keep it off um i've tried weight watchers in the past um although i think it's changed dramatically since i tried that i've never been to classes I, i've i've people that i've been with have sort of had you know their experience of going to the classes and luckily i've just you know pinched their knowledge and and sort of just run through the regime without actually necessarily going this is the first time going to man through fat that i've actually proactively done something and, and done something for myself and going to classes and seeing somebody about it I'm just trying to think what else I tried. So yeah, this is at the moment it's man v fat and combined with a bit of slimming world, um, and it's just introducing more into my diet of of, of fruit and vegetables, uh, and have it, having healthier healthier meals for dinner, healthier meals for lunch. Um, I mean, almost almost what I was saying there about being determined and being able to sort of switch off the the idea of having to have like big flavorful food. I think almost every single day for lunch for the last four months, probably probably 90% of the days I've had almost the exact same lunch, which is a ham or chicken salad, which contains exactly the same items with the same sort of like little bit of dressing on, on top for a bit of extra flavor, almost exactly the same. Not, not a lot of people could do that. A lot of people would get bored of that just for one week, let alone every fucking day. Um, but it's working at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I've lost now just over three and a half stone in four months, which, you know, I'm massively in, in happy with. And, like Stuart said there about, you know, you've got to do it for yourself and, and, and you know, we all know what we need to do. I, I'd sort of, I wasn't even in the the right, you know, I wasn't even in the mind frame of losing weight. It was, my wife started about, I think about three or four weeks before I did. I was just carrying on eating as I did before and then saw this man be fat on, on, on um, Facebook and thought, Joe, you know I love playing football. Maybe this is, maybe this is a good way of doing it. Went down there and still wasn't in the right frame of mind to do it, but just, that sort of level of competitiveness and, 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 and willpower just came through playing it. And, and since then, I've just sort of been so determined to use this to, you know, completely change my life. Will it happen? It's a long road. We never know where, you know, as, as good as I've done now, it can all slip away. We all know that. Like you say, all of us have been there and done that and lost a load of weight and, 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 and then put it back on and more. Um, but right now, the way I'm feeling, this is, this is going to be wherever it leads me. This is hopefully going to be um, life changing. So, that's where I am in the past and 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 today. So, wow! And, uh, and and listen to your podcast and stuff. And I, 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 it might sound like I'm blowing smoke up your ass, but genuinely, like listen to your podcast is is really is inspiring me to hear other people because, as I mentioned earlier, hearing we don't talk about it. You know, as, as serious as this podcast is turning out to be, you know, this is this is five guys. Not oh, I love fucking love oh, podcasts. <laughs> I've never had a five guys. What? I mean, it would be terrible of me to tell you to have to do it, but I mean, you have to go. Have you have to go to have Ashton, Ashton, which is a downside, but you know, it's a pretty good burger. Well, I was thinking there's one in Travel Centre, isn't there? So, <laughs> well, that's his, 
Um, <laughs> but you know, this, this, this is five men on a, on a podcast, which are you know telling you know some of some some of the stuff that we just don't normally talk about. I've never had this conversation with Stuart or Michael really. Beyond, yeah, yeah, I'm doing well on the weight loss, but beyond that, we've never sort of talked about you know the feelings behind it or why we why we are the way we are or anything like that. And um, I think it's a barrier that needs to be uh, needs to be broken down. If I'm honest, because I think there's people that are super, super healthy or, you know, whatever, and go into the gym all the time. Although there's or there's those guys that are like really completely like you see on the news that are like 500 pounds or something ridiculous like that. And they and they need to do it. But there's there's a there's a, a mass of men in the middle who need to lose weight, should lose weight. And for whatever reason, accept it or don't know what not that they don't know what to do, but they just don't have the right frame of mind to it to, to to actually lose that weight and i think talking about it is probably the only way that some of those guys are gonna be geed along to to do what they need to do yeah i definitely yeah. i think i think comes a realization that you're not the only person who feels that way not only bloke that feels that way it's a yeah. pretty big thing um we always say that you know my breakthrough mode was 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 going to an over is anonymous class that i didn't even end up sticking with to be honest but it was like I was sat in a room with, with people who, who had the same issues with food that I had. And it was like a massive eye-opening moment for me to say, it's not just me. I don't feel, I'm not out here alone having these issues with food and having these feelings. Um, and that's what eventually, maybe another 12 months down the line, leave me to my very fat. But it's massively important. And blokes don't talk about it. Because we don't talk about anything. Let's be honest. We talk about uh, football uh, and, you know, did you watch the game last night? Have you seen this film? Have you been gaming? Nobody ever talks about how they're feeling, or you know, it's not what we do. It's, it's important yeah. that, that, that these, you know, these programs like Man Vee Fat and, and what we're trying to do with the podcast are out there. So, and other people as well, uh, mental health advocates and stuff like that, getting blokes, good blokes talking. Um, it's a good thing. It is a good thing. Massively so. Massively so. Um, all right, let's move on. We've we've all shared our feelings. Let's let's not that I'd want to hush, uh, usher that away, but this is obviously a food podcast. Let's let's move on to what actually we can do and what we have done food wise. Um, so, what sort of easy changes do you think people can make? You know, obviously, you know, I think Michael was saying you know he wants to eat more fruit. I mean, that's think things like that switching switching to you know fruits and vegetables when for for snacks in particular, I, I would imagine it is is key. But what other sort of easy changes have we made? Can we make? Um, yeah. I think I think the way you've got to do it, we can all go from zero to ten in a week. We can all go from having a terrible diet to having, you know, being on a, a meal replacement diet. It's easily done. Go to light of life or whatever. It's never going to last. It's never like it's not worked for me before. I know one man you've done fat diets. We yeah. talked about it. Uh, the best bit of advice that I could give to anybody who wants to make a sustainable long-term change in the way that they eat and the way that they think about food to so do it ever so slowly so literally the fruit great thing i want to eat more fruit i'm gonna do that for a couple of weeks i'm gonna eat more fruit into my diet and then i'm gonna have one day a week where i eat what i consider to be really healthy and i'm gonna do that for a few weeks and then I'm going to increase that to two days. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm cooking from fresh maybe two nights a week. And it's these little changes that you, that you could do over the space of a year, maybe even longer. But once you do and you get into them, just become habits. And that's, for me, that's the key, is, is to make little small changes that then become habits that you don't even think about. Yeah. And that's not saying that we don't go out on a Saturday night and have 10 pints and a pizza on the way home. But if the rest of your week is good, yeah. you can do that. You can still enjoy food. The worst thing to do is to, is to cut that connection with food because it's a difficult one because I was talking to a friend of mine who's a, who's a personal trainer last week um, and he was, he'd listened to my podcast with the British Obesity and he said he, he had a light bulb moment and the moment was I had an addiction to food high sugar, high fat foods, and he, he had, more, he had a, a thought that if I was a heroin addict, I could go cold turkey. There's programs that I can go on. If I am a gambling addict, I can reduce how much I gamble and eventually stop. If I am an alcoholic, we say I can stop drinking. If I've got a food addiction, I can't just cut off mm-hmm. eating. Mm-hmm. I can't just stop eating food. 
that's a whole other ball game, you know, over um, and, uh, anorexia and stuff like that. But I can't stop eating food. So you have to find a way to eat healthier, but still eat. I think I think what you what you, what you certainly what you said in the um, early podcast is the biggest mistake that people do make is try too hard to change, and I think um, what it when you early, you know when you said about your um, you, eat, you like your portion size, and that's why Slimming World's working for you. Yeah, that's yeah. because there you're eating habits. Yeah, <clears throat> by changing their eating habits, don't don't ever ever change your eating habits because that's how you eat. If you shovel in that food, that's your eating habits. Just yeah. make sure that that's the healthy food. If you're gonna, if you want something that, like a, a massive meal, just ma- create a massive salad. A, yeah. it's yeah. digestible. B, it's full of nutrients and it's colourful, but still create it's it. So it's yes, it's low calories. So still create it. It's, you're still able to shovel it in your mouth, but yet you're not shoveling, you know, you know, crap food in yet. So don't don't change your eating habits. Yeah, you have to you have to do something that's going to work for you. If, if you absolutely love um, lamb, <laughs> like, a, like a normal person, yeah, like a normal person, yeah. Don't stop it. Don't cut lamb out of your diet and say, "Oh, lamb's a, a fatty meat. Oh, I'm not going to eat anymore." If you enjoy it, eat it. If you yeah. enjoy eating a pizza, right, have a pizza once a week. Try and make it healthy. If not, reduce your calories throughout the week and have a big Domino's. But because going back to what we were saying before as well about um, how we how we treat obesity um, and like be, or being unable to cut off not eating food. Um, also, the potholes at every turn because when you're a heroin addict, nobody's trying to make money off your addiction. When you are an alcoholic, nobody's trying to make money off your addiction. The diet industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. Mm. Mm. Mind. They're just trying to sell you quick fixes all the time, quick fix, quick fix, quick fix. And it's, it's detrimental to, to, to a long-term sustainable um, diet that's going to be healthy, make lose weight, you know, and I think what we do as a society is we just look for that quick fix all the time. How can I get as skinny as I possibly can, as fast as I possibly can? You didn't get you didn't get fat overnight, so yeah. it doesn't come off the same. Well, I was having, I was having one of the conversations um, last night at, at the, the Manchester League um, with a lad, and he's been struggling with his weight. And I says, "Come on, let's 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 try and work together now and look at what we're going to change." And he says, "Right, what have you got planned for your breakfast tomorrow morning?" And he says, "Well, I've, I've got wheat bix I says, right. I says, tell me, honestly, how many bisques of Weetabix do you have on a, on a normal... No, so we all like, get a, a, a bit of cereal and we'll put like four or five bisques in there, don't we? I says, be honest. He went, oh, that's probably about five or six. I says, right, eat five or six Weetabix tomorrow. I says, don't change that for a month and then have four and a half for another month and then go to four the next month. And then until you can get to a sustainable um, size... That you feel comfortable with. Don't go too. Don't go. Don't reduce it to one. That's li- who, who eats one bisque? I mean, come on. Are they called bisques? Are they called bisques? Eh? <laughs> I'm not convinced they are, to be honest. But <laughs> right, no. If okay, if you're going to <laughs> all day, and the, their their own version's called wheat bisques, isn't it? Oh, so yeah. that's where I'm, I'm term. Only I'll, back, I'll back you. I'll back you up, Roman. It's definitely called a bisque. Let's see. Yeah, I've 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 also heard of this bisque term. Three two. Oh, well, biscuits like a suit. That's a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're completely right, Roman. Small reductions all the time. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Don't 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 go. Yeah, don't go. Oh well, I've got to just drink this soup Diet all day. Is, yeah. <laughs> it's, I've got. A, it's like it's like what uh, what you see. A, a guy who plays rugby got a diet plan. Well, yeah, that's great. That might work for him. It's not necessarily going to work no. for you. It's no. got to be tailored to how you eat. What you food you like to eat, what food you don't like to eat, you know your lifestyle, what hours you work, everything. Whether you like breakfast, whether you can't, a lot of people can't stomach breakfast, and you know it's too early for them to eat. Okay, that's no problem. Don't yeah. eat. Yeah. You've got to find something. You've got to find something you enjoy as well. Because at the end of the day, if if you if you're going through some whatever your diet may be, if you're doing something that you're resenting day in day out, the mm. second that you slip off of that wagon, you you're just gonna you know you're just gonna literally um, binge to you know excess and, and and put it all back on again or you know you'll find it harder to get back onto that onto that wagon so um you know that that is difficult um and i think the other thing you said there is about like um 
losing as much as you can as quickly as you can. I think, and you know, obviously if you if you've got he- health issues, um, then that's one thing. But I think a lot of people get too caught up in oh, I'm going on holiday in six months' time and I need to lose as much weight before then, or you know, they don't look at it as a long term process. Whereas I am, you know, for example, like I I don't care how long it takes me to get to where I want to be. If it takes me three years, it takes me three years. It's all about you know, make, you know, as as you love you boys love. It's all about the journey um and and how we get there <laughs> can you spell some change we've got ears to beat we come to you with open hands but instead of on the streets we're begging on the podcast do you want this episode to be our last Will you please go to Patreon and donate some cash? If you enjoy the Food Review UK content on YouTube and here on the podcast, then please consider heading to patreon.com foodreviewuk and making a small donation. A lot of people look at fat loss um, for, for image and that's why they do go for it. And they don't actually look at it for health. So they think, oh, I've got to lose weight, I've got to get in my swim shorts for my um, beach body and whatnot. Why don't you just get healthy? Yeah. As opposed to what you look, who cares what you look like? Just become healthy. That's, line. Yeah, that's where I am now. I, like, I'm noticing things about my sort of capability that are not as good as I used to, and definitely worryingly bad. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you, you need to do something now because it's actually... Like it's yeah, it's exactly as you just said. It's not just about looks. This is about like mm. life, really. Mm. Any funny examples you can give us? Hmm. Anything, anything that would make us <laughs> <them> laugh? <laughs> uh, no, really. Like, <laughs> like for, I don't know. This is definitely a while ago now. Like probably more than five years ago, I would have thought. Um, when you bend over to do your shoelace up, and you because your your stomach and whatever pushes into your lungs, you actually. Ooh. <laughs> Stuart's laughing brilliant <laughs> um, you actually can't breathe whilst you're doing your shoelace up I don't know if other fat people yeah. experience that uh, yeah I felt that. but you actually you basically have to take a breath or you have to stop breathing bend over and then you yeah. get up and you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with, with the belt buckle rash that you now oh. have <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I'm 40 now and, and, and I've got i I. I do exercise and for well I have been exercising regularly um I've been I've been doing kickboxing training and uh, I really enjoy it for me um I'm no good at team sports I'm not I'm not a good I'm I'm not a good sportsman but I enjoy hitting people in the face and and getting <laughs> getting punched in the face and all of those kind of things I'm a opposite to Roman really I'm he's a lover I'm a fighter but um one well, of the a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we have to do is uh, one of the things they had us doing is is deep lunges where you put one knee down to the floor I can only stand up again from that position on one side now because my knees are Ugh. gone um like every time I stand up there's a knee twinge and I'm like, I've let, I've allowed myself to, to. They reckon that. I remember years ago, someone telling me if you've got a beer belly at 30, you're always going to have a beer belly. And like now, I'm like, if someone had told me if you've got no knees at 40, you're never going to have any knees. That <laughs> might have um, <laughs> ma- ma- more impact on me. But yeah, it's, it's bad, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I have knee issues. Mm. I, even now, I lost the weight. I still, I still have knee issues. I think yeah. I've probably had for the rest of my life. Yeah, good on yeah, I mean, knees. That- yeah, you'd think they'd be better designed. Yeah, you know, slightly more better as the shock absorber. Uh, um, and, it, and it's that reason I am an atheist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, there was good why is he designed? I designed these. In fact, if, if these are the perfect kind of. Please, you should have given. I want like grass up in these. Even even God has this design faults. Well, yeah, really. <laughs> and this is this is a, this is you evolved as well. Imagine how fucking bad your knees were as a prehistoric yeah, man. That, yeah, probably even yeah, happened. Imagine, a, I imagine I how bad your knees were as a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, yeah. Michael. Cheers. <laughs> um, you were talking there about you know obviously trying to. Uh, 
make sure that you still eat good food. But um, do you think preparation is, is, is a key, you know, um, we all, with our busy lifestyles, are all, it's easy for us to go and get a takeaway. It's easy for us to go and get something that's a convenient meal from, from Sainsbury's or Tesco's or wherever you shop from. Um, but one thing I'm sort of finding out is that, you know, some of the meals that we're having, you know, some of the home cooked meals that we're having are just fantastic. It's obviously just finding that time, I would imagine. But, you know, have you, have you found that guy like as part of your, your, your to use the fucking word then as part of your uh, weight loss program? Have you found that, you know, you've, you it's, it's made you prepare more food that you've, you've you know, been cooking more or anything like that? Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big, uh, a big meal prepper. So I prep all my lunches and my wife's lunches pretty much two times a week for the whole week. And it just takes that. Um, I work on the road, so it takes that, you know, you never, you know, turning up at a garage and having to have a Ginster's pasty, Ginster's pasty, don't know what you say down in the south. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so it, it takes that away from it. I can just eat what I've prepared. Um, but I still, I love cooking. I love cooking. And that's a big thing as well. I enjoy cooking. I, I, you know, I enjoy creating foods. I enjoy trying food. Some of them work, some of them don't. Um, but I, I can't disconnect from, from that side of, of food, you know, the smells and the tastes and, and whatnot. But yeah, rather than being surprised that you, you're turning up at 12 o'clock in the middle of nowhere and you've got nothing to eat, I like to prepare and run my meal pretty much. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Stu's lucky enough to have a wife and I'm just still single, so I'm still on my own. So um, it's, it's more, I think it's more difficult to kind of like, you know, cook just for yourself. So meal mm. for me is is essential in the day because I'll, I'll spend in the morning or Sunday morning uh, two hours and I'll have like literally all my week's worth of food that I can come in from like say come in from home microwave it eat it dead quick because if I'm you know if I come home from home and not cook it that's when I'm going to binge and eat really you know really crap food so I'll make sure I'll that's my eating habit I'll get it in straight away so I'm not craving anything after that um, and that's because you can I mean I don't really count macros and like that, I just make sure I've got, you know, colourful food that I'm eating. Um, so, um, whatever I mean, I mean as, as well, I get in quite late from work, so I can't really eat a big meal, so just a wrap, I'll just, I'll just make some form of wrap, and it does make that, it's, it's happy days. Yeah, it's, it's coming home and not, not having to think, I think. Mm. and having to shop, and having to think, well, what can I knock up? I have a I have a whiteboard that's got a Monday to Friday Monday to Sunday on it and every single Sunday afternoon I'll write what I'm cooking in the evening on the whiteboard. It it, it helps when I go to shop when I go and do my shop then I know exactly what I need to get for the week. Uh, yeah, it really helps. Saves on the money as well. Yeah, it does save because I, I literally don't waste anything anymore. I was used to you know oh, that's been in the fridge too long I need to go in the bin. Mm. You went to a butcher's recently, didn't you? Yeah, I went to a butcher's up in up in Berry where. Um, in Manchester, and you know, you get uh, all these good packs, packs of meat, dead sheep, and it just goes in the freezer. And I can just pull it out when I need it. It's really good. But yeah, I think it it, it doesn't work for everybody. Um, and we do use the excuse that we've not got the time. I think that's a big one. Oh, I've not got time. I've not got time. We well, have yeah, two hours out of your out of your week to prepare your lunches or you know prepare yeah. your food food for the next three days. It's nothing really. Mm. Stuart and Michael, you, you're both big cooking guys as well, aren't you? you yeah. So you, you obviously you guys do a lot of prep, but uh, how do you, how do you find that compared to the, obviously the convenience? Like and obviously a takeaway and, and things like that is just so easy when you you know when for whatever reason oh. you just want to go for it. But um, how do you find the preparation side of life, especially from a health point of view? Like cause obviously you know what's going into the meal that you're cooking. I'd say the majority of our meals are freshly cooked. So the the biggest issue that I have that stops, that I think, stops me from for, from having healthy regular eating habits is that my meal times aren't regular, um, mm-hmm. and that is something that's happened since my son was born. Well, not since my son was born. Since my son hit an age where our evenings are so irregular because there there are activities so for example on a monday evening um theo has his tea early and we all as a family go to kickboxing we get in from kickboxing at half past seven and then we have something and it's a bit like roman was saying really you want some you know you you either just make something uh, you want like a wrap or something but 
my wife doesn't necessarily need to eat healthy meals. My wife's a tiny, tiny woman. Um, <laughs> it's a very, very. It's like it's like in Super Mario where Bowser has kidnapped the princess. That is that is essentially me and my wife. Um, so th- there's that uh, t- Tuesday nights. My wife's at Spanish class. I'm doing a podcast. I haven't had my tea yet tonight. Oh. Probably shouldn't be drinking as much beer as I am. But we'll. I will. I'll probably eat at about ten o'clock tonight. That's not a healthy eating habit. It, uh, habit. That's not a healthy eating habit. And th- and this continues throughout the week. And I disagree. I disagree there, Stu. I disagree because depending on what time you go to bed, it, it might not sit right. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But the calories are still the same. Oh, yeah, the yeah. They're still the same whether you eat at 10 o'clock at night. There's a bit of a myth like, oh, don't eat after 7. Yeah, like, I know. After 7, the calories increase by 3%. Oh, no, they don't. It's still <laughs> calories. Yeah. It's like kind of, the, you know, and you get these things, don't eat after 7 and don't eat before 10. and Calories in, calories out. Mm. So I, get, I kind of get you time-wise – it's difficult, isn't it? Mm. Uh, and you don't want it to. I know I can't eat too late because mm. it doesn't sit right on me. But not necessarily because it's an unhealthy habit that I have. Yeah. No, no. You're right. I think the biggest problem for like with with like the eating late thing is that you'll then eat something to put you on, and it's those things that you eat to put you on that aren't always necessarily going to be the um, the best choices. It's going to be some some carbs. It's going to be you know. I'll just have a bit. Like people go, why don't you just have a piece of toast? Yo, I'll just have a piece of something with no nutritional value. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, and of course, you like, piece of toast as well. Like, you know, one piece, just one slice. Yeah, yeah. I'll, just, <laughs> yeah, I'll have half a loaf. I'll have a, half a loaf. For a reason. I'm not. A, I'm not a meal prepper, but we do. I know when I when I lost weight last time. A lot of that was everything was fresh cooked, everything was fresh prepped, and it. Do you know what? Cost quite. I know you're talking about you saving money because you plan your meals, but um, once you're buying fruit and veg, is expensive, as well. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, especially fruit. Yeah, yeah, and and once you have a pink lady apple as well, that ruins all other apples for you, yeah. and then you end up having to yeah. spend. Three pound for four apples because a royal gala apple now tastes like crap because you've had a pink lady. They shouldn't allow pink jazz. lady apples. <laughs> I've had the jazz. jazz. I've had the jazz apple. Yeah, it's not a patch on the pink lady. Oh Gosh, come uh, on! Half the size for stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Jazz. I don't know where this jazz. Just because you met a guy from the jazz uh, fucking tourist board or whatever it's called, <laughs> um, that doesn't doesn't mean that they're better than. Than tucking pink ladies, mate. Pink ladies are the best. Crisper and it's got more depth of flavour. So stick oh, that sh- pipe. Shut up, you. Try buy your passion fruit every day. More, <laughs> more fragrance, so you know. Does does yeah. putting jazz as an adjective in front of things immediately improve them? So is the jazz apple the best apple? Is the jazz magazine the best magazine, <laughs> man? Like the jazz cigarette, Michael. The jazz singer. The jazz singer, Neil Diamond. It was um, oh, there was a. I, I watch. I watch a channel on YouTube called Hello. Um, Bet you do. Not Hello Fresh. Fuck. What is it? TV. Uh, the food. <laughs> the the fresh art. Oh, produce the produce. The produce this nerd. Is good. This is really or the good. The produce geek. Content. Was it the whole no, thing no. of that? Was it? Was it Hello Fresh? No, not Hello Fresh. Hello TV. No, Hello not Fresh. Produce. produce. Was it all of that? Produce. I, sorry, it's called. It's called Produce. Pro, sorry, it's called Produce <laughs> Geek. Look, you're looking at it, you still can't say it. It's not hard, it's not hard, is it? Uh, so, uh, there you are. For the listeners, can you repeat that, Michael? Produce Geek. <laughs> <laughs> and his passion for fruit. Um, for fruit and vegetables <laughs> and fresh produce is absolutely wondrous. He is American, oh. uh, and I'm, I'm going to have to click on the video because he talked about this he talked about this specific new breed of apple. Here it is. This is it these is. are my favourite bits of the podcast when Michael goes on the internet. This is great. This is the whole thing. Yeah. Love it. So, Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. He's got it. So it's a, have you heard of the honey honey crisp apple? Yeah. I had yeah. one recently. Not yeah. a patch on the pink uh, lady. on yeah. the uh, pink lady, no. Oh. You've had one recently, sorry, where from? Uh, oh, that's a good question. It was Asda, I believe. 
Asters. From where? Asters is. What? That's unusual. It's an American breed. I'm sure I didn't. It was definitely... Is there another... Is there a honey... I don't know. I'm not saying you didn't. I'm just saying that is the first time I've heard of it in the UK. That's, that's good, because it's a great you, apple. But... Didn't you review it? Yeah, correct. But it's an American breed. Is I'm going from you America, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair, fair, fair play. Fair uh, play. No, definitely, definitely have had it recently, and it was... Uh, yeah, I'm almost certain it was Asda. Asda's is... Fair Vance. I'll so have a look, check. I'll look next time. Yeah, it's in um, the um, it's in I the like apple, apple section. I'm not willing to travel stateside to get one. No. <laughs> you have the big apple. Hey, boom. Let me have a look. Here we go. This is brilliant. Oh, it's called Sweet Cheeks, this brand. And it looks bulbous and it's got a lovely blushed skin. And the way he talks about it, it looked lovely. Um, how do I get on this? I don't know, Michael. Uh, how do you get on anything? Yeah, what are we talking about? Fresh, pro- yeah. I guess Claire and I eat quite um, like fresh cooked meals, but the problem is they're not always particularly healthy. We do try, but like I said earlier, it's just oh man, we've just not we've not found the healthy stuff that we like really. Do you right, Michael? You don't really like spicy food, and for me, one of the things that that uh, that helps me when I am losing weight and doing well is spice because. There's no, there's no calorific content in spicing up your food, so, and it and it imparts big, punchy, silly flavors. So you can make a really super healthy chili that's really nice and spicy. Whereas, if you're not spicing it, you're losing a lot of flavor. Maybe you need to start eating spicy food, Michael. Yes, yeah, fair comment. Do, how do you guys eat? Do you, do you are you spicy lads? Yeah. We, I said to you know when you're cooking a bit of bland food, you just a little spice to it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. But there's also there's also other ways of doing it. Um, one of the good ways I'm I'm mad. I actually love chorizo, and it's, it's not it's full of fat. It's not it's not great for you, calorie wise. Um, and I just found this thing of when I'm cooking something in Spanish, I use the tiniest little bit and I chop it really fine and I just crisp it up in the pan and just get the flavour from there. Yeah. It's full of flavour, so you don't need a massive amount of it. Stuff like that, a little cheap mm. trick like that to use that you can use that can make bland food less bland. Yeah, with uh, we had a, ch- a chef on recently on a podcast. She's so you, your spices are literally a zero calorie, full flavour. Yeah, it's like, I, love, I love my turmeric because um, it's a, it's natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, so I'll nail that. Obviously, c- cinnamon is as well, um, and coriander as well. So like. In, in, in Indian spices, when you want to want to just play around with um, just you know if you're making your own kind of um, like marinades and things like that, you will find one that just sticks. And it's like man, that's banging straight up, and yet it's healthy. Yeah, yeah. Trial and error. It's trial and error with a lot of these things. But what I would say as well is, if, if you like a certain food, if you you know like we said, if you love pizzas, try and make as healthy. It's never going to be the same. We know that. But try and make as healthy as, as a pizza as you possibly can, reducing the calories, reducing you know, reducing the fat. Um, you might scratch that itch if you've got an itch for a pizza. Oh, I'm dying for a pizza, and you know I want to stay on plan and I don't really want to go to Domino's or wherever. Try and make something with a flatbread, bit of you know, tomato paste, some chicken, or you know. And, and, and you gen, like you said, it is, it's never going to be as good. But you never know. Like you may, you may nail something that you absolutely bloody love. I mean, like some of the meals we're having, genuinely, six months ago, I probably would have turned my nose up and thought, you know, that's not, never going to satisfy me. Uh, satisfy me. But now we're having it, you know, every single week or whatever, and it's just like, wow, this is this is amazing, big, powerful food. And and you know, the, because we're running with the the slimming, uh, slimming world thing. Uh, the the portion control you can you can still keep quite high and and still you know, feel you know full and satisfied from that. Um, so yeah, it, it might not be it, you are, you can't compare it to a Domino's because that's going to be there's going to be so much more oil and fat and shit in there that that, that is you know, impro- like increasing that flavour. But there might be something else you can put in that has just as equal a flavour in, in in a completely different way. Yeah. Completely. You you love something, take it and kind of deconstruct it and say, right, well, how can I reduce the calories in this thing that I love? You love a curry, um, 
and you know you love a, a chicken tikka masala how can I reduce the calories well there's loads of Slimming World chicken tikka masala recipes and some of them are absolutely spot on you can go that if you like say if it's a pizza if it's a chilli if it's a, a paella a, anything that you, that you love how can you reduce the calories but still kind of keep the, fla- the same flavours there it takes effort and it takes work but in the long run once you learn that recipe you know you don't have to think about it mm. Um, I thought I'd bring this 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 up because obviously the 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 field that Food Review UK is in. Um, what what part do you think social media has played and the internet has played in you know our diets as a, as a society? Do you think it's improved it or do you think it's 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 made it worse because the it's up to the convenience? Uh, and and also you get cocky shits like Michael Jameson out there that are you know showing off these amazing chocolate bars and stuff <laughs> stuff like that. I I just I I personally think um. They, you just find how gullible the nation is by some of the stuff that is just spouted on on the internet, um, and it's trying to find the stuff that actually is um, a scientific fact, um, and b you know it's it's it, but then it gets entangled and there's a jungle of well what, what's what's right and what's wrong, uh, and I think you just got to be careful. And then there's people um, out there, and we follow a, a personal uh, a personal trainer with who just cuts the bullshit. Uh, and tell and, and, and tells James it like, Smith. yeah he tells it like it is um, he backs his stuff up as well and he will just there's people there's people he's challenged now and they've they've they've, they've just they've just hit under a rock because um, they've just <laughs> killed him everyone's trying to make money off 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 dieting everyone's trying to make money off whether it's uh, slim fast whether it's you know. And we shouldn't demonise Slimming World because it does work. It is a way to control the calories that you're taking in. But it's just a calorie-controlled diet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they make it complex. They say to make it easy, but make, they try and make it quite complex because it keeps you going back to Slimming World. Well, that's necessarily... If it works, it works. I'm happy with that. You know what I mean? The same with weight washes is exactly the same thing. It's all calorie control. Calories in, calories out. That's how... That's how what's, what elicits fat loss. What you what what you, what comes with that though is is this multi billion pound industry that people are just trying to tell you like like I said sell you that quick fix all the time and people just get lost in this you know should I be like we said should I be eating after ten o'clock should it be um, intermittent fasting well yeah controlling your calories over the course of twenty four hours the the process of weight loss is not a complex process it's quite scientific if you burn more calories than you take in you'll elicit fat loss and you'll lose weight everything else that comes with it the psychological side of it our link to food our how food can make us feel um, our addiction to the, the good things so so you know the the fats and the flavors um that murkies the waters and then also you have a section of society that's trying to make money so it's such a a complex issue when you add all that together that really the process is quite easy um, so should we, uh, Stuart uh, make sure we don't monetize this episode when it goes on YouTube <laughs> <'cause>... <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah so what comes with that obviously people are trying to say things but at the same time you have to cut through the, 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 what you believe to be true and what you don't believe to be true. Is it a trustworthy side? That can be difficult to have because you have, you know, some girl off Love Island who comes and, you know, follow her Instagram and she's trying to sell you what is essentially laxatives to make you lose weight. Well, yeah, because you're going to shit the way out. So, you know, it is a murky place. Social media is a reflection of that. It can be very good. There's some really good people out there. James Smith is certainly one of them. Um, there's some really good people you can follow. But at the same time, there's some there's some bullshit out there as well. The, the darker side of it is, you know, you, you have these, like I say, these girls who go on Love Island and they get paid £1,000 to say that they're drinking, you know, slim tea or something like that. Uh, they take a before and after picture that's clearly been taken about three minutes apart, one where they the belly's in and one where the belly's out and you might have got to change the bikini and that's where it becomes a little bit dangerous I think yeah. um, 
But that's the quality of the person that you, you suppose you follow. Yeah, I'd imagine that's more dangerous for some of the younger generation who are a bit more sort of... Yeah. <coughs> it, 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 like, it's, it's me, um, it, it really vexes me because... I think these are these girls have this this body image that and and we're I'm a 37 year old man. I, I've got body issues. So what a 17 year old girl yeah. whose body issues must be like. I can't even contemplate. And then you get people who are trying to basically make a book out of them. Yeah. Uh, Stuart, what, what, how have you found? Obviously, you're you're as a, am I and, and Michael involved in in sort of the side the the internet side of food. Um, how have you found it's affected your diet and 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 all your weight loss? I, I, I don't think it has too much of an impact, to be honest. I'm, I'm, whilst I'm very involved in social media and stuff, I I, I understand it and I take it with a pinch of salt. Well, I've, I mean, obviously, I've seen all the things come and go. The num the number of family members who I have had to hide on Facebook because they're flogging <laughs> Juice Plus or some, <laughs> or you know. That's that's as far as it's impacted me. It hasn't made me think, oh, I want to do this, oh, I want to do that. If if anything, I think it, I'm not like I said, said before. I'm not sure it's a good thing, but sometimes it, it kickstarts. A, is the shame a good thing? That's the thing. Well, the thing that the thing that that's probably going to kick. Michael, will you tell your wife to stop it? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> it's not none of it's broken, is it? <laughs> I mean, that's an absolutely absurd amount of noise. <laughs> this is, is the. I can't. This, this is definitely the episode we're going to win the uh, award for at the uh, British Podcast Awards. <sighs> I guess I can't even believe that's so loud. Can you close that door, please? The old woman. Oh, thank oh. you, Claire. Thank that, you for your help. That's unfo no, unfortunate. No, misogyny. So, no. bleep it out. I don't need that. Claire, tell them you're not offended. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I said. I said, I said. I said. Bloody hell, woman. And I think that could be misconstrued as sexist or domestic. I don't know. <laughs> All right, love Stuart, you. Stuart, how much of this is making it into the All final? All of uh, this is in the podcast. Yeah, I thought so. Um, yeah. So sometimes things, sometimes things will make me think, and might kickstart a bit of a thought process into making me go. Do you know what? Actually, tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna not, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna not buy something on and in on the way home from work and eat it in the car. Inevitably, like I said before, the willpower, the willpower dries up, but um. Yeah, I think for me, it's it, it doesn't have the same impact. But I do worry about you know the, the the young kids and particularly working with children. I see the impact that social media has on them, um, and you know it, at an increasingly young age as well. When I first started teaching, you know, eleven and twelve year old girls were not as appearance conscious as they are now. There are kids that are starting my school at, in year seven, at eleven years old, that are presenting themselves in the way that. 15 16 year old girls used to present themselves they're very body conscious and that that is a worrying trend and yeah and it, and it coincides with the rise of social media i started teaching in 19 in 1999 so over the last 20 years i've seen social media grow and the impact that that has on young people and it's it is overwhelmingly negative for young people i think and it's a shame because i bloody love it for me in my life but for young people Think it's, They're um, ruining it. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not for kids. It's a bit like Christmas. It's not really for kids, is it? <laughs> um, did, uh, before I come to Michael, I mean, did, on the flip side, food porn coming back to, to social media is obviously a huge thing. Does, does that make it even harder? And obviously, that's something that we <laughs> we do play into. I mean, the, the ironic the ironic thing of this this podcast will go out on Thursday. It will probably be paired with two or three reviews that day of obscenely fatty <laughs> foods that Michael Jameson has, has reviewed. Um, Should we have a just, look? Yeah, yeah. What, what is actually coming out today? What can viewers be treated to? What, what, what's going to look hypocritical of us slamming in this podcast? 
Let's have a look. Right, what we what have we got? <laughs> uh, and is it too late to change it? This is the seventh of March, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so it's called it's a review of a product called Mister Jim, which yep. is oh, it's the peanuts caramelized caramelized peanuts coated in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. They day before is um actually not horrend bad yeah strawberry milkshake malties from uh tesco so shreddies um and the d- day after is dum dum donuttery so donuts <laughs> um but, but yeah you know what? if we go back to <laughs> when april it was 2016 <laughs> yeah go back to last saturday apple pie that's a fruit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, were they jazz apples by any chance? Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So does does that? I mean, we play into it very much so with a lot of the stuff we review. But does like food porn and that does it does it make it harder then for any of us? Do any of us see stuff on? I don't know what you guys, Stuart and um, Stuart and Roman, what you follow and what you do don't on, on on sort of social media and the internet but do you see stuff that makes it harder for you to stick to your uh, stick to your guns no i i, I don't think it does i mean I, I like a bit of food porn to be honest with you i do that's genuinely do give me that cheesy kind of anything cheesy and pasta i'm all over it if, but... anyone, if anyone says they don't like food porn they can jog on because it is something to be you know loved in it really yeah and I think what do, what do I follow on uh, on Facebook? It's tasty, and they'll come up with some random yeah. dishes that are just absolutely. Yeah, they do some mad shit. Oh, well. it's like it's like pancake days today, right? And it's like thinking, what can you eat with pancakes? And then you get five ways to eat pancakes. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you have pancakes today? I've never had my tea. I've had half my tea. It's just sat, sat next to beside me. You know what I mean? So well, it's full of glass. It's full of glass. Um, <laughs> Was that one of the tasty re- recipes? I eat the glass in there. It's a way of losing weight. You eat glass and you you drain blood, don't you? So <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess blood is technically weight. Fuck your flavouring right now. I've got a blood transfusion diet, yeah. So, um, <laughs> well, there's things. That, I mean, there's, there's things that take to an extreme level, isn't it? Like you know, the, was it the epic meal time that they did like the oversize lasagnas and that's just stupid but there's something i mean we actually did a food porn challenge in our whatsapp group didn't we yeah so it was it was kind of make the healthiest thing take a lovely photo with the right lighting and yeah whoever took the best photo won didn't they so make it look like magazine who, who quality was? wasn't it i think it was you it was, <laughs> it was uh you did something really good to be fair um but no it, it, in that in that sense it does kind of inspire you to kind of, you know, when you do cooking, put that finesse on it. So you are proud yeah. of it. You, you're not just making it for yourself. And it's like, mm. if someone did come around and say, what do you want for someone to eat? You could knock it <coughs> up. And it's, you know, you're proud of then making, even making a cracking dish, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, it works both ways. I think it works with healthy food as well. Like making it look, look presentable and nice. And that helps. We eat with our eyes, don't we? And, and mm. It's obviously so. I mean, there is some stupid stuff on there, like when they do them fruit kebabs. What's all fruit kebabs about, really? Who wants to eat a fruit kebab? Unless it's dripped in chocolate. Or it's got passion fruit. Passion fruit. Stop coming out back on this passion fruit. You're blush. I don't want to demonise it too much, because I think actually also uh, social media and, and, and these things, like starting on the food porn, um, as we said earlier, I mean, there's, there's ways around it. You might see ideas that look amazing, but then it's just, you know, putting a healthier spin on it. You know, just just because that recipe is full of like cooked with lard or something like that, that doesn't mean that you can't do the same meal in a much healthier way. Um, so I think it's good for that. But I think social media as, as a whole is is has helped me, as you boys can attest to, from me. Ev- every week you get a little update from me yeah. on the uh, man for fat, and I think if you use it in the right way, it can actually be um, a good way to focus on. You know, if you are dieting or if you are trying to stick to some sort of plan. Um, it's a good way of sort of having keeping that focus and actually having someone to answer to, I guess, or or or, or yeah. just have a a log of those. Yeah, you know, that, that, yeah exactly. Um, what's helped me? What's helped me more than anything on the social media side is um, like when I was looking to meal prep first. So I'd YouTube like you know meal prep, 
and there is a yeah, absolute array of things about meal prep in there. So you just generally find the one you like, yeah. and you then running with it. It's absolutely brilliant. Yes, it's, it's it's all about it's all about oh, sorry, uh, all about finding the uh, the right thing for you. It's it's some people are, are are stronger at keeping to things than others. You know, it's, if if you're really struggling, then yeah, probably following all these things like tasty and whatever is is probably not going to be good for you because it's just going to make you want stuff and maybe you need to cut them out for a little bit. But it's it's it just depends on what type of person you are and uh, and, and, and what you're consuming with your eyes, as as, as you said, Stu. Um. Before we move on to social media, I thought we'd end this with um, we've talked about sort of all the good side of things. What's our Achilles' heels? What's the what's the one thing? It's coming back sort of to the food heaven and hell. But what's the one thing that just really is almost completely impossible to uh, to uh, deny ourselves? And uh, I'll start with Stu and uh, Stu and Roman on this. Come on, Stu, you go first. Uh, I like a nice IPA. Probably not great. Oh, what, what are you on there? Um, it's it's just Dead Pony Club Brew Dog Dead Pony. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like a nice IPA on the drink side of things. Um, I'm like a I'm a big Mexican guy. Well, I'm not a big Mexican guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I love Mexican food. So anything like you know what? It sounds really bad. I like a big plate of nachos, with a load of chili and pulled pork and all that. Oh. Kind of, like, uh, have you been to um, El Taquero in Manchester yeah. yet? Oh, it's good, isn't you it? Know, true story, we went to go last Friday and it was closed because the kitchen, someone with the kitchen was gutted. We had to go to uh, Luff's Liquor and Burn. Right. But yeah, El Taquero, I've been there a couple of times. The tacos are amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Love it. Have you it's seen... <laughs> this is this is good. Have you seen their Sunday bottomless brunch that they've started doing? Yeah. 25 quid all the margaritas you can drink all the all the t- all the uh, tacos you can eat for about three hours just oh, that, Jesus. that would that 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 would be my achilles heel like a tw- <laughs> tw- tw- 25 <laughs> quid yeah yeah i like it though uh, what about you roman oh, okay uh i'm a sweet tooth man i mean i could nail a trifle <laughs> I just family size, child, child, family, family size, bloody extended family size. Uh, <laughs> child, yeah, Ukrainian, Ukrainian size. That's a big trifle. Um, yeah, just chocolate with me. Yeah, you yeah. struggle with that. Yeah. Did you have one of them massive dairy milks for Christmas? Some big, like massive ones. Did you get one? No. Oh no! I nailed a, I nailed a full tub of miniature heroes. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's a chat. Because my thought, of, my train of thought was right. I'm still in man versus fat, and I'm still going through the season. So if I eat it all in one sitting, even, a, even then, it's, a, then it's gonna then it's gonna then it's gonna burn it off gradually. Yeah. Didn't didn't actually work that way. I put on weight. Did you even <laughs> eat the miniature one? Because that's the worst one by a mile. Nah, they're quite good. Oh, they're crap. Uh, oh. <laughs> Also, uh, Roman, if you do it in one week, that's only going to affect you for one week, technically. The next week, you can lose <laughs> yeah. again. Well, th- get your bonus the week after. Well, that it did, but you see, I'm Ukrainian, so I can have had two Christmases and two, you know, in, in oh. one kind of week. So there's me eating my turkey. Then I then I go and eat a twelve course meal the week after. So imagine weighing in, weighing in, and come back. It's 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 difficult. Yeah, yeah, that's a killer. Uh, Stuart, Stuart, MJ, what's, what's your uh, is it yours? Is it, is it Mexican, Stuart? I mean, a bit of beer, obviously. Um, yeah. Chocolate as well. I'm a big, big, big love chocolate. Uh, do you know what? The, I think my biggest problem is that I've got so many Achilles heels. I, I just bloody, <laughs> I love it all. Um, mm-hmm. It's the, it's the snacking for me. It's the, it's the, the, the snacking in between meals. That's my Achilles heel. Yeah, my meals are pretty healthy. I'll be honest, like meals aren't a problem for me. Meals are meals are pretty healthy. It's everything else that I put into myself. Yeah. MJ, I'm probably exactly the same. Yeah, I have a lot. I have the uh, odd sort. Of, I don't snack massively at work. Um, I I do have the odd candy in between uh, meals though. Like at work, we got candy sweets and whatnot. Um, not this is more a habit sort of Achilles heel but like I'll, I mean like I will have takeaway on Saturday like 
basically all like ninety nine percent of the time we will have takeaway on Saturday. Like that's a thing. Um, what is your um, regular takeaway? What's like uh, uh, frack aside, and you're not you know getting a new order for something. What's what's your go to? What's your one that you tend to order most? We cycle. Um, so well, not, do, you not, you do they not deliver? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pretty typical would be pizza one week in uh, Chinese the next uh, McDonald's the next Indian the next <laughs> then probably just cycle through all of that cycle through everything you know, no sorry but it... McDonald's does not belong in that rotation that's no. not that no no McDonald's is lunch or it's too late to have anything. I'll just stop off there at a drive through on the way home. Like, that's not... It's not oh, on Saturday to... night. What should we get? Oh. McDonald's. <laughs> but yeah, McDonald's is your hangover. Kind of like, oh, let's just go McDonald's on a Sunday afternoon. This is weird to me. Nice meal. <laughs> um, and then we'll throw in the odd... Oh, KFC is off, often... <laughs> uh, not often. Like, in there. What? It's not in the rotation. Yes, it it's is, not. mate. Oh, it is, mate. Um, oh, and then like the pizza. Surely that's it. Maybe, maybe like, um, maybe like an order in kebab. Yeah, like you might treat yourself might be no, sh- no. like a sh- like a mixed shashlik on none. Not you're not going to get a doner on a pitter. You might get a big kebab on the was... order in. Do you um, when you have your McDonald's? Do you get the uh, do you get the plates out and the silverware? <laughs> <laughs> do you treat yourself? Good in it, trying to tell you about my meals and you <laughs> being quite mean. Food um, shaming. Food well, do shaming as well. <laughs> I, need, I needed a spoon for my chicken McNugget McFlurry. That was the last time he used cutlery. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry to explain to uh, the guys. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it or heard it, but yeah, there was a reason that I brought up McFlurries and McNuggets earlier, which was that Michael Jameson enjoys dipping his McNuggets in his McFlurries. I guess that's quite an indulgent Achilles heel, isn't it? Oh, why? <laughs> yeah. why, 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 why do you like doing that? We don't know. Because he's a oh, pervert. It's, a, it's, a, it's every food. It's every, so you've got different... If, For example, if you were to do it, not that you can anymore, but if you were to do it in a Smarties McFlurry, you'd have two different, <laughs> cri- you'd have two different kinds of crisp or crunch. That would be the batter and the shell. They're both different. Uh, you'd have soft... You'd have soft... Um, from the ice cream and soft and juicy from the chicken, um, a creaminess like you'd have creaminess, sweetness, richness. Uh, you'd also have very crucially, uh, is different temperatures as well. And when in any food stuff, if you can combine as many things as possible, that is when it becomes a taste sensation. Um, I can't believe you're trying to justify it. I mean, <laughs> not trying to justify. I don't, I don't feel like I need to. Just explaining why it's so good. It sounds like something a pregnant lady would crave. <laughs> and you know, I'm not one. So. <laughs> you find... Probably because it was over nine months ago and I haven't had a baby. <laughs> yeah, he's a wrong. He's, an, he's he's proper wrong. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've listened to all the shows, but keep listening to them if you haven't, because you'll find out many, many weird things about Michael. <laughs> Absolute freak. Lovely stuff. Uh, for, for me, a big, big fat sugary jam donut. That is absolute oh. light. If, if if I've got one of the like people like when working in an office, it's a fucking killer. People go out when it's their birthdays and they bring in cakes and shit. And if anyone delivers to the office just a, a batch of jammy donuts, oh, it's a real killer not to not to be indulging in those. Um, and on a savoury front, probably burgers, big juicy fat burgers. Oh. Five, where's, where's, five where's guys. Man. Best burger, five guys. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. What, about, what about best donut? Where's that from? Good question. Probably at the moment somewhere like Wenzel's, Wenzel's Bakeries. Where? Quite like them. I think it's Where like a southern, southern Greg's. I think. Thank yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, didn't we have this conversation, MJ, on one of the Fruck shows where you were saying about bakers and there was a, a big north south divide and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's words to that effect, vaguely. Um, yeah, Wenzel's is from Germany, though, so... Well... Yeah. Okay. South I, Germany? I'm not aware of them up here at all. Well, it's not oh, really? a north-south divide, it's an east-west divide, isn't it? Correct. Brilliant. Well done, Michael. 
This is Timmy. Timmy. Say hi, Timmy. Hi. Timmy doesn't know what podcast to listen to because people don't leave a review. Isn't that, isn't that right? right? That's right. And isn't it also true you're true an orphan? orphan? Absolutely. There you have it. Conclusive evidence that orphans, and definitely not me using a higher pitched voice, have a harder life because you don't leave a podcast review. Review us today. today. Save an orphan. An orphan. With all that said, Michael, dazzle us with some social media. It's time to read some questions. Let's read some <laughs> questions. Um, all right, so we post on our social media channels every week. Uh, or not every week, every other weeks. Um, twice this week. Um, and ask for your not, questions this week. Hey? Not in two weeks. But not in two weeks, we won't. So No, correct. So not every week uh, or every two weeks, really. Look, am I going to get on with it or am I going to get patronising <laughs> comments? <laughs> probably both probably both that's, yeah that's that question <laughs> it's all right. it's all right. i wouldn't change it uh this is a brilliant one right i've done sorry i should say i've not read these i read i've read a tiny bit of the first one but what's brilliant about this one this is from uh a a new um instagrammer in terms of the name uh, Mr. J.S. Carter oh. has changed his name to Joe Carter Show. Yeah. And in fact, he's now got a YouTube channel, The Joe Carter Show. So have a look on YouTube for The Joe Carter Show. Um, when I f- when I looked uh, about five days ago, I subscribed or something. I think he, he was in the top ten or something. So you need to look. Just it is, It's not fair, so just scroll down a little bit. Give him a subscribe. Lovely little channel. Um, he, he's not only is he a big fan of the channel, he's also a very entertaining chap. This is the guy who did the uh, Santa Claus Christmas message this year. What? So he's got... A, a, huh? What? Sorry? Last year. Did Santa Claus Christmas Last... message? Yeah, yeah. this is him, isn't it? Yeah. No, that was yeah. Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, no, he... he yeah, that's right. He arranged it. He yeah. arranged it. Yeah, ah, Santa yeah, Claus. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he's got a, like a very like eclectic mix of sort of voices. So he's very good from like an actor slash voices point of view, and he, he he's got some like quirkiness that you'd be familiar with if you you know know anything about me. Really, <laughs> I see shades of myself in him. Probably why we get so along so well. You know, similar. Shame. Um, anyway, he said, "Go subscribe to his channel. It's a lovely little channel. He's doing like a water fasting." Uh, he probably mentions it in this. Actually, here we go. Love. So this is a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Taking about four hours to get into it, sorry. Yeah, it's good this. <laughs> Lovely topic. Here is my essay. I am in a long I am in a long process of losing about ten stone. Spent the last fifteen years eating absolute crap and even was diagnosed with type two diabetes last year on my thirtieth birthday of all days. I managed to shake off the diabetes by adopting a very restricted diet for four months. Nowadays I still really enjoy a bit of junk food and love my sweets but it is something I have once a week or at special occasions rather than every single day. So I have to make the healthy day-to-day food taste just as appealing as the junk. Do you have any go-to healthy yet deeply appealing meals that you could suggest to us food-loving types? (laughs) 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 Oh, that was audible, was it? Yeah. Yeah, any go-to healthy but hearty snacks? Uh, meals. Go to no. meals. If you if you eat short time, stir fries, prawn stir fries, chicken stir fries, bit beef. Um, you get demonised because there's, there's quite a bit of sugar in them. But I would I like to buy the packet sauces that come in a little pouch. Use them sparingly. So don't even use a full one. Maybe use a half one. Cut the calories that way. Um, with some noodles and some rice. Good flavours. Flavourful. You know, they come in all different kinds. Korea, I'm into Korean food at the moment as well, so that's Korean good. barbecue. What do you say, Ron? Go to meals. Oh, uh, burrito. Yeah. Burrito, man. There's no bad in a burrito, is there? You've got your beans, your rice, your, your beef and, and, your, and your sauce and your, and your spices and whatnot. Burrito, just, they, they just rock. Yeah. Burrito bowls. Bur- oh, you do a smashing yeah, burrito bowl. Yeah, burrito bowls, yeah. Bit of beef, bit of rice, just deconstruct it, put it in a bowl, take out the calories from the wrap. Good. Yeah. What about, you, what about you, Stuart? Anything yeah, do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm having that, Roman. Like a, a, a burrito. You take out the cheese and the sour cream, there's nothing bad in a burrito. Um, and I I love a burrito. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, burritos are uh, my top top five, uh, definitely top five. Uh, on a good day, they're, they're my number one, and you can make them healthy. Like you yeah. can make them, and like you say, take away the wrap, you've made it super healthy. Um, make some pico, homemade pico de gallo, tomato, red onion, yeah. coriander, lime juice. There's nothing bad in that, and it is. I was going to say peng then, and then I realised I'm a 40 year old man, Mancunian. Um, it is absolutely <laughs> banging, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can't really help on that because, I, like I said earlier, I'm struggling with trying to find healthy stuff that I actually enjoy. But I do, I do like burritos, but I probably don't make them healthily. So sue me. All right. That's well. <laughs> um, Luke C99, opinions on intermittent fasting. Oh, I tend to do it on and off, but can ne- <laughs> I tend to do it on and off, that's yeah, but can never seem to sustain it for longer than a week at a time. Uh, intermittent fasting is just calorie control. It's just a way to control calories. Uh, it works because you eat less calories in a 24 hour period. So, so for any- it works, but it's it's you know if you're hungry, eat. Yeah, basically, people you, say people say it as health. Uh, no, it doesn't as well, uh, body. I'm not, and I'm not coming from any kind of scientific way, but I, I don't believe any health benefits. No. The weight loss, it's it's just calorie control. Yeah. Is there a sp- intermittent fasting? I know we've we've mentioned it a few, but people that aren't you know at home that might not necessarily be aware of it. Is, what what is the sort of general idea behind it, and Five what is two. the sort of but is it the five and two diet? Yeah. Two is, is the, yeah. the market leader. Yeah. There's, there's, there's different ones. There's, yeah, there's different ones. So you five and two, where you say you, on your normal five days you'll eat two thousand calories. On the two on the two days you'd probably eat maybe five hundred calories, uh, or you know, or just slightly a bit more. Um, but then you've got other other kind of uh, fasting where you'd only eat between eleven in the morning and, and and three in the afternoon, and you can eat as much as you want in that in that period of time, but obviously not for the remainder of the day. Mm. So I think if you like your food, that's a difficult one. Because yeah, I yeah. Mm. a lot of food between them, them I was, yeah. I'll be honest. If I was given free reign and they were like, yeah. eat what you want, I'd be like, yeah, just okay. Go to a Mexican place, so, yeah. you know, on just Sunday. Got, just go to town yeah. and it. So, <laughs> yeah, intermittent fasting work because it controls calories. But like I say, is it sustainable over the next 40 years of your life? Probably not. No. Uh, there's also a heartwarming piece of community interaction here. Luke C99 has replied to Joe Carter show saying Sainsbury's do a really good be good to yourself chicken chow mein. So that might be worth a look. Frankie Funko, first question, what are your thoughts on quality of calories or just quantity of calories? So eating low fat because you get more but not really better for you. If it's to elicit, if it's to elicit fat loss, the calories don't really matter. It's just a number of calories. It's not all calories are. They say that not all calories are created equal. All calories are created are created equal. There's certain foods that will do other things to your body. So obviously, good fats are good for your body. Uh, vegetables and, and fruits are full of vitamins, minerals, stuff that you need. But like, really, if you if, you know. Wanted to control calories and you wanted to have 2,000 calories a day and you just ate donuts for only 2,000 calories, you would lose weight. Yeah, yeah. Calories in, calories out. That's the science behind it. Get everything else. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You want to lose weight, calories in, calories out. Love that. That is something, that is something I'm going to look into more, actually. What, yeah, it's. It sounds simple, but just looking at the calories in different things and seeing maybe which ones are the higher ones that I enjoy less, cutting them out, and maybe replacing them as ones that I enjoy equally but have less calories, something like that. Yeah. Might be just a simple thing. That might be the start that you need. Yeah. And you already sort of said about trying to eat more fruit. I mean, certainly for snack foods, that's great because they're obviously going to be normally sort of lower calorie than, than certain other, you know, snack foods that you probably are eating and probably mm. more nutri- and more nutritious. So you're not only sort of improving on the qu- qu- uh, the level of quality, sorry, the level of uh, calories that you're putting into your body, but potentially other health benefits as well. So. Yeah. Uh, second question, do you think the fit bros on Instagram that load up things like porridge and ice cream pints with chocolates and biscuits to the point they resemble modern art gone wrong and smugly state IIFYM 
despite it being 1,000 calories of complete trans flavor abomination that won't even taste nice, the absolute <laughs> worst the absolute worst thing to come from the social media health craze. I, will, I would never even look at something that was in title Fit Rose. No. <laughs> I would instantly dismiss that as being shite. Yeah. <laughs> it just, just, that just sounds like... I've, ne- I've never seen it, to be honest. Yeah, that just sounds like them dickheads who are in the gym. And you always see that. So that just, I can imagine them title themselves Fit Bros. Yeah, it's... Yeah. You know... Fit what is... What is uh, IIYIFM? I'm yeah. not familiar it's, with that. It's your macros. Ah, uh, okay. So if 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 you're you're tracking macros, so you're tracking um, fats and and um, proteins and carbs, and it fits your macros, you can have a free reign. That might right. be great. That might be great if you you're trying to um, maybe build muscle or something like that. If you're trying to lose weight, or earn a bin. Decent. Uh, Joe Carter Show has replied to Luke C99. <laughs> nice, <laughs> thanks. Oh. I have a Sainsbury's on the way home for me now, so we'll try that one. I probably didn't need to read that one out. Yeah, good um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're getting the conversation in stages, though, as well, not in just one long thread. Maybe we could release the uh, the podcast in a similar way, Stuart, if you could <laughs> cut it up and just <laughs> splice things in between. Yeah. Um, bong, bong lungs. Bongers. Bongers. I love a gamble whilst I listen to the Food Review UK <laughs> podcast. I love free spins and footy bets. And congrats to Nate on the way. Always my G hearts. And Boji. Brilliant. <laughs> Good. Uh, another <laughs> bong lungs comment, comment here. Bongers. Bongers. 3 1 Crystal Palace had me £8 return. <laughs> Lose 50p, gain £8. You get me, lads. And what's everyone having for dinner? <laughs> Fucking love this guy. Uh, legend. <laughs> I'm going to eat some pancakes when we finish the podcast. Uh, I had chicken wraps with onion rings. R- Roman's having some glass. Chicken wraps, chicken wraps halfway there. And then it was like, oh, I'm onion rings. And then it's the mayonnaise and all the stuff that you dip the onion rings in. Yeah. Um, I had. I'm uh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Correct. Uh, I had chicken skewers, corn, and something else. There was something else on there, but yeah. Donut. Yeah, probably a donut. Yeah. Yeah. I had a a glass burrito. <laughs> well, sorry, hang on. Why is the glass in your burrito? What has happened? Okay, so as he was preparing it, he dropped a glass and it went. Two over minutes the before we got on the podcast, I heard the I heard the, I heard the ping saying, you know, pretty much re- nearly ready. So as I'm wanting to get a plate, I hit one of the dipping bowls, which then oh. dip, which went oh. everywhere and near oh, my the dipping bowl, near the dipping bowls, near my <laughs> uh, burritos. Um, so it kind of like, wait, have I just got some shards of glass in my burrito? She's like, well, there's only one way to find out. Eat it. So, so <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not wasting food, am I? How many gonna... calories are in it? Uh, well, like, <laughs> it's very cal- calorific, to be fair. Um, but do you know what I mean? It were a smashing burrito. <laughs> hey! hey. <laughs> I get bullied off you. You know what I mean? <laughs> eat, 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 the, eat the glassy burrito. <laughs> uh, the laminator here is disregarding all of the other participants and said, "What's Nate's favourite place for a healthy dining experience?" Uh, yeah, this is the one comment that I've probably seen, and uh, I don't genuinely have an answer because, to be honest, when we go out for dinner, it's usually it's it's going to be our, our treat night or something like, that, and I'm not you know necessarily going to be going. Genuinely, the only place since I've been doing this diet that I've actively tried to be good at is a subway so i don't really it's such a shitty thing to say but like from there you know i'm not buying the sandwiches anymore i'm getting the salads and yes it's expensive for something you could knock up for a fraction of the price at home but for the convenience of of just having it while you're out um their salads are are, are really very good like i would definitely recommend them um if you're enjoy that with a fork yes uh yeah and they're quite they're they're, they're a, <laughs> Yes, Michael. With a normal fork. question, if you ask me, I, the concept of a salad, I don't really. 
Well, you've not asked everyone else how, you know, you didn't ask Roman how he was eating his burrito or uh, how, <laughs> you know. Carefully, very carefully. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yes, Michael. I you eat it with. Um, I mean, unless you take your own cutlery with you, you eat it with a black plastic fork. It also comes with a knife, but generally, I don't need the knife. Generally, find the fork is enough. Does that answer your question? Yeah, profusely. Good. What's it? What's this? Uh, Ol Olis? Is this Ol Olis? No. Olis Chaplinski. No. Oli Chaplinski. Yeah. Oli Chaplinski. Oli Chaplinski. Uh, Olesh Plinski, do you guys <laughs> rate the lighter options that are out there on the market? I think I prefer just cooking because I know what I'm putting in, and also the driven up prices are just ridiculous sometimes. Hashtag Patreon. Uh, also, MJ, can we get a sneak peek of the fruit you're going to be reviewing this year? <laughs> I nearly said earlier that I do, you know, I do review one one piece of fruit a year. So, um, yeah, I haven't decided yet. To be fair, but. You'll see it at some point in the next nine months. Passion fruit. Passion fruit, yeah. yeah. Maybe, or... yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Can't really buy them, though, can you? Can't really buy passion fruit. <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> you get yeah. it quicker, so what's stopping you from getting it from an overseas place? <laughs> yeah, fair comment. Yeah. Are what you was, not going to... What was the question? Lighter options? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, get yeah. it. All right, for convenience. If you can, like... Um, balance, healthy balance, and all that. They're good for convenience. Um, if you like a chow mein, cook a chow mein from fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the only the only thing that we've sort of actively switched to, and I know it's still not a healthy option because really shouldn't eat it, and uh, especially with the man who fat boys on here will be uh, pro water. Um, but we've switched all of our uh, fizzy drinks to the uh, to the uh, zeros and diet yeah. variety. We've, we never buy the, I just, and I, I certainly wouldn't suggest that as me being healthy by any means because I know that they should be cut out altogether. But um, coming to the calories in, calories yeah. out argument, that that is obviously an easy change. C completely right. Water is water is the, the best thing you can drink. If you like drinking fizzy drinks, drink fizzy drinks that have got no calories in. Yeah. Okay, that. That's that cool. is one thing I'm good at. Actually, I may, I do when I'm at home. I mainly drink water. Mainly. Well, well done, Michael. Well done, Michael. Do you want a gold star? I, I mean, I drink Coke all the time, but that's mainly water in it. Um... That was before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my own comments coming back. Attack me. Uh, Reese Peru. This is another Quezzy hosted by MJ. Oh. Um, this is called Potato Latin. Can you name these common fruits from their Latin name? Good yeah. luck. Correct. Malus Pamela. Po oh, an uh, apple. Yeah, correct. Uh, Prunus avium. Plum. Prune. Prunus avium, it might be. Great. Not, not prune, no. Any more guesses? Yes. No, that one's cherry. Oh. Uh, here we go. This one's easy, I think. Actinidia Deliciosa. That sounds something you get diagnosed with. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it again. Actinidia Deliciosa. Wasn't that in the fast show? <laughs> wow. That's, um, that was, yeah, yeah, that's, that's uh, melon. No, no, quite obviously it's the kiwi fruit. Obviously. Oh. Um, that was my next guess. Yeah. yeah. Musa. Or Musa. The Ban fruit muesli, right. Banana. Yeah. Banana, yeah. Oh. Fucking hell, this guy here. And uh, Ananus <laughs> Comosus. Pineapple. An pineapple. How do you... Have you got these up, Stuart? An ananas, isn't it? Spanish for yeah. pineapple. Yeah. Oh, you piece of shit. Yeah, pineapple. It's not a um, trick, is it? Then, Knowledge. And then Finn Rogers... Rounds out our social media questions with an off-kilter statement. When you're hungover, it's impossible to eat healthy. Correct. True. Yeah. True. Thank you for your questions and comments. <laughs> no, I defunct this last week. You've been eating glass. You don't fucking <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, but no, it's not impossible. It is. It is impossible. I think it so. It is impossible. It's improbable. 
at least. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a scale as well. So the more hungover, the more unhealthy you have to eat. Yeah. You feel better. That's banana, a fact. Banana smoothie. That boom. And then you're right. It's, you can eat what you want then. Banana milkshake from Mac. Avoca- av- avocado <laughs> smashed. And banana smoothie. It's the hangover cure of all hangover cures. What? Plus two anodins. And seven <laughs> pints. <laughs> to be fair... You could go out and eat relatively healthy. You could probably have avocado smash, a bit of bacon on toast. But if you cook, if you cook it from home, or you get takeout, yeah, just you know, deal with your hangover by feeding it. Crying into your pillow deeply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a good for there's, there's a shot of romance life there. Um, <laughs> Stuart, hit us with the game. It's time to play a game. Let's play a game. Let's call sweet up. You're both playing independently, so you don't have to go for the same thing. You don't have to agree. Um, if one of you gets it wrong, the other one continues to play, and then you can you can just laugh in the other one's face as you you continue to rack up scores where they have failed. Um, it's been a, it's been. Can a, we um, go on before we get before we start? Can we get a ruling on where um, glass sits in the sweeter or savoury scale? Just a- absolutely just so neutral. It's more neutral than a mushroom. <laughs> yeah, I was literally going to say it's, it's yeah. mushroom levels of nu- yeah, neutrality. neutrality. Right. <laughs> neutrality. The, the first food stuff out of the hat is oh, what an easy start for you here. It's the sixth time out. It's Starburst. Opal fruits. Opal fruits, correct. Opal fruits. Correct. <laughs> Opal fruits. Will the next food stuff hashtag be. Hashtag midlife crisis. Hashtag midlife crisis. Will the next food be sweeter or Savorio? Savorier. Yeah, savior. We've got the KFC's in a tower burger. Third time Ooh. out of the hat. And it's definitely savorier than a starburst. Will the next food be sweeter or savorier than a KFC's in a tower burger? Sweeter. Um, yeah, gotta be sweeter. Cut me in me. I'm not cut. <laughs> how, how am I copying you with that basis there? Sweeter than a KFC's in a tower burger. Yeah. What does that say? Oh, oh, Marmite. Oh. That is the, the, no, the, it's not. It's the most savoury thing in the world. <laughs> it's the most savoury thing. Marmite is uh, Marmite's top trumps. That yeah, you don't yeah. beat Marmite. That's she might that, maybe might yeah. be up there. Yeah, that, that is bad luck in it. That yeah. Marmite. That's Nathan's oh. fault. Nathan put Marmite in the hat. Oh, sorry for putting what a savoury food in the fucking hat. Yeah, like the most savoury oh, food. Hey. Oh, why would you do that? Yeah. Exactly, Nathan. There's no wiggle room with it. Yeah, no. yeah. Well, but whatever you. But regardless of if I'd put that in there or not, there would have had to have been the most savoury thing in there. So, yeah, but no, there's, uh, there's wiggle room. There's argument, argument. argument. Yeah, there's yeah. discussions that well, can be had with bacon. There's a discussion that can be had with marmite. It leaves no space for discussion whatsoever. I don't think you understand how games work, mate. Well, you're the, mate. you're the you're the host. You you can oh, don't mate me, buddy, buddy. <laughs> he mated him. He mated him. Fucking hell. Oh. oh well, bad luck, boys. I mean, yeah, I I bad. you know three. I, I yeah, I, I put it in the hat because I foresaw this evening happening. I I knew months and maybe even years in advance that you guys would be on, and I did it solely to screw you. If I do apologise, apparently that's what, what's the polar opposite to my mate then. What the sweetest thing? Yeah. Good question. Mary Lane Cookie probably. <laughs> um what is the sweetest thing? Coffee sauce. Very sweet, sauce. isn't it? I mean I think you probably started with about as sweet as anything. Starburst and intensely sweet, aren't they? Like yeah. intensely yeah. sweet. Uh, who put them who put them in? Me? Oh. oh I still wiggle in with the Starburst, isn't there in your various flavours? Yeah. I think oh, uh, Do you have it dipped out? That sweet Ooh. in it, sweet and sweet. Yeah, sweet, sweet with um, a bit of added sweetness. Something like a warhead. Warhead, mm. that was like a boiled sweet. Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, an Uncle Joe's mint ball. That's very sweet, isn't it? A, a what? Uncle Joe's mint ball. You Why know? are you telling me about your Uncle Joe's minty ball? Is this I a North South Divide thing? Do you not? Do you not? Yeah. Do you not do what Uncle? What? You don't have Uncle <laughs> you know Joe's that. down south. I don't know what that is. Oh my no. lord, Uncle Joe's are phenomenal. The Northern Diet. Uncle Joe's mint balls are brilliant. I mean, I don't. It doesn't matter how many times you say it. It sounds. It sounds. Yeah. It sounds like something I'd be reporting someone. For. Right, I'm bringing some. That's that. I'll add it to the list. Things to bring down. I'm bringing cloud water beer, and I'm bringing Uncle Joe's mint balls when I come down in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I'm, can you stop I'm saying Uncle Joe's mint balls? In gravy. Some gravy. Just bring in a bucket of gravy. I'm just going to shower you with it. Just bring pockets of gravy. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> what what are they? Perishables. Uncle Joe's mint I mean, balls. That are, yeah. they're, they're pockets an, of gravy. <laughs> an intensely sweet, but intensely minty. They're, they're quite a grown-up boiled sweet, really. I didn't get into Uncle Joe's wow. until I was about 12, 13. Um, what um like what a morning, yeah. He didn't get it to you until you're about 16, 17. In the northeast, yeah. they, they call them black bullets. They're a, they're a, they're a small round, boiled mint ball. Are they? Is it like along the lines of like a, a glacier mint or something like that? No, grow up. Next level. Yeah. Crumble Good. mint crumble. A what? A mint crumble. Yeah. Oh fuck. Uh, what's what a mint? I... What's a mint crumble? Like an apple crumble, but you don't mint. know what a mean crumble is. Awesome. Is it a crumble that's really good? <laughs> uh, a mint crumble is it? Like, is that like a Kendall cake or something like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Kendall mint cake. That Kendall, might be one of the sweetest yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coconut ice. Yeah. Probably even sweeter than fudge. Kendall mint tablet. Cake. If you ever had Scottish tablet, that's yeah. sweet. Yeah, that is very sweet. Yeah, Uncle, I'll bring some Uncle Joe's mint balls down though. I'll, nice. I'll, I'll put put, are you... put them in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> are you adding? All, are you going to add any of these to the uh, to the SRS list? Uh, I'll add them all to even out the marmite. I'll add them all. Oh, add yeah. all of them. All of them. Kendall mint cake, Uncle Joe's mint balls, sort of tablet fudge. It's all in there. Good stuff. Correct. Um. Before we sign off, just a reminder to anybody who is uh, listening that the uh, the Facebook Food Review UK group is going great guns. It's uh, every day. It is an absolute treat just seeing, as we said earlier, food porn, food discussions. There was one obviously yesterday, although not as you're listening to this Monday, uh, talking about pancakes and what our toppings were and everything. So if you want to interact with us and other fans of the Food Review UK realm, please head over to Facebook and search for Fruck Unwrapped and Fans. Um, or if you can't find that, look on our social media accounts, our Twitter and our Facebook page, as we have links to them pinned to the top. But please come and join us, because it is bloody great fun in there. Um, other than that, I just want to thank... Uh, Stu and Roman for coming on thank you very much guys it's been a great barrel of laughs and good fun with you and very informative I think it's probably I, I joked about it earlier being this being one of our more serious episodes which I don't think is a bad thing by any means but it's um, no. it's good to talk to, talk about this side of food to be honest yeah. because every week we come on here and we, and, and we make jokes about things and talk about you know the excess side of food but to actually talk about the, the, the better side is, is good and, and uh, yeah so thank you very much for coming on and, and doing that with us Thanks for inviting us, guys. It's been a pleasure. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. So, if anyone wants to find you guys, where can they find you? Uh, search for us on Facebook, Man v Fat Podcast. Uh, we're on Twitter, same same handle, MVF Pod. Um, yeah, we're on iTunes. Yep. Man v Fat Podcast. SoundCloud. Awesome. Yep. SoundCloud. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, please, please do, guys. It's uh, it's a very uh, very good show. Very very uh, worthwhile show. So, um, uh, thank you very much to Michael and Stuart for joining me. So, this is the bit where I say that and you then say nothing. Thanks. Thank you to the uh, listeners as well for joining us. And uh, I bid you a Jew. Good night. Thank you for having. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> Thanks. Nathan. Cheers, guys. I love you. I love you too, Stuart. Thank you. Nathan. Nathan. Na- yes. Nathan. Yes, I sleep well. Sleep well. Thank you, Michael.
Bye. <laughs>